I'll check your mic. Yeah, you can. Don't forget to cup the bowls. Welcome back to Absolutely Unnecessary. I'm Jay Kuhn. With me, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, the owner of this place, Simon Carson. And today we've got head Muay Thai coach backslash just all around general dipshit palm, Joe Bubia. <laughs> And yeah, the man behind the scenes over here, Daniel Herbertson. What's up, fellas? How we doing? Glad to say that I was the best that you could do today. <laughs> Times we've, are tough. We've, 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 we we've, promise we'll get some better guests <laughs> coming up soon. We've lost a, bit of, just, a, bit, we lost a little bit of momentum. <laughs> yeah. Now we're on to just dudes hanging out at the gym. And next on week we have the cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. I love some stories. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. So before we get cracking on with everything... Uh, we got some local desserts, results to run through. We had... Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, probably big weekend over in Perth for the guys on a turn or their uh, development series over there What is Perth. the deal with the development series? So it was an all amateur, amateur sort of fight card. So originally it was going to be a prime, I think, but a few pro fights fell through. And then, okay. um, and then yeah, to be honest, we had a few amateurs lose their fights over there. But we ended up having three on. Uh, Danielle Stevens... Jake Savick and Liam McNeil, all, all three on and all three wins. So that was a really good weekend. Uh, Daniel fought really well, kept her distance, kept up on the feet as planned. Jake Savick uh, got all takedowns and top control Just in all three rounds. Savick hard. Yeah, so it did it did did a good job. To be honest, didn't know his opponent was Southpaw until the bell. <laughs> so we'd be <laughs> maybe practicing a few entries from Orthodox. So, and, um, no so, problem, then, yeah, so we sort of switched it up on the move, but he adjusted really well, did a yeah. good job. Uh, and Liam McNeil, look, Liam's obviously had 20 odd uh, tie boxing fights, and <gasps> he was fighting a wrestler who I thought would maybe give him a hard time. And to be honest, he was against an 18 year old uh, kid uh, who will actually be, I oh, think, Liam. really good. No, he looks about 14, but he's actually 25. 25. Really? Yeah. He's so He'll I, look older once he goes through puberty. But um, <laughs> yeah, how, yeah. how does it work with, with Oz? I don't understand this. Because Liam's had how many, you just said, 20. Muay Thai fights. How is he able to go back and fight amateur MMA? Well, because it's a different sport. But the WA Combat Sports Board did ask the same question. Because okay. they got reported that he had like 50 Thai boxing fights, which yeah. wasn't the case. So that fight did actually almost fall through the night gen before. Generally, like, I know stateside, if you've had a professional bout in boxing or kickboxing or anything, you can't then go back and be an yeah, amateur I'm pretty sure it's the same MMA. back at home. Like, if you've gone pro, you're pro. Yeah, you're There's even guys, to be honest, that shouldn't happen, it shouldn't happen that have fought, well, I don't know if it's showed up or topology being all over the joint, but yeah. have gone pro, then back to amateur. And then back to pro. Get your shit together, Australia. So um, go and fight, um, fight a can, tuck the driver in like a yeah. small stadium in Thailand. Yeah. But that's pro. Then they come home back to Amazon. Back to fight now. Yeah, it doesn't here. get called up on, but it's like technically. Yeah, you've been, I mean, yeah. in my, in my, the way I look at it, you've been paid, you're a goddamn professional. So. Yeah, it is a tough one. Like, because I don't think it was an un. <laughs> look, I mean, so the, from that fight, by the way, that Liam won by submission, which really was. So, that did, was not a, use, did not use his Liam, experience. Liam, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, his striking was extremely sharp. I think his striking right. obviously created. He's pretty the fucking happy with himself about it. Uh, <laughs> he's like, to be honest, the more I was, champ gets I, a serve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did he Like, uh, when he, he subbed oh, him with a rear naked, naked choke, right. um, it was like, to be honest, like one. It was something like two weeks ago. Against the cage, he was doing like a head outside single. So don't do that. You know, your back taken off this. And he's like, "Oh, show me that." Did that, and then like walked straight to the corner and he pulled off the thing that we drilled two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago, and I nailed it in the fight. Like, and, and, and before the fight, he was saying, "I, I am becoming a god," and it was walking around the back of the room, and I was just like, "Oh." It's good and though. when he won by submission, I realized. Deep down, I wanted Logan Murray to win his opponent. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, That's good, though, man. That's good. So, but yeah, Liam will probably now. Now go pro wanted to get him. So I, I don't. It's a really tough one too because if you've had twenty pro tie fights, yeah, uh, going back and doing amateur, but on the same side is you know here's a white belt that guy had, had like I'd had I don't know six or eight years of competitive wrestling in you Australia. Know, no, in Canada. In oh, Canada. So in, in, in the North. At least, yeah, so. yeah, in, in North America. <laughs> I'd say you'd be like, it's still not the same. Um, it's not the powerhouse of wrestling like Alaska is. Hey, yeah, um. still hold the Alaska <laughs> State record for pins in a season. Um, that's not a wrestling thing, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, more for, that's later when we're with <laughs> Joe about Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, but yeah, look, it, it, it is hard to sort of get and how you sort of do, like, you know, was that a fair matchup yeah, or yeah. not? 
So could I, I do know. amateur boxing in Australia then? I think uh, amateur in the VABL. I'm pretty sure you could the boxing league, but the, oh, the amateur Olympics here the I come. VABA <laughs> the association maybe not the Olympic. Yeah, I don't know. The ones that know. tied to the Olympic. It's a pretty movement. weird line, really, to draw between <coughs> amateur and pro. Like getting paid is no indication of skill. Absolutely not. Yeah, that's and that's the other thing too. It's like let's say Liam goes against a good wrestler black belt that has yeah. a tie fight, so two or three MMA fights. Is that an unfair fight? No, I, I think. Yeah, the other know. guy would be favourite to win. Yeah, that. that's so, what I'm saying. Yeah, they yeah, have to lean so. the other way. I, re- I reckon that the, the the difference at that level, especially at those levels, become you, you're, the guy that's the grappler is going to have a way bigger advantage early on yeah. than a guy with a striking background yeah. in MMA because once that shit gets negated, I mean, Joe's a hell of a goddamn kickboxer, but if you put him on his back, yeah, he gets but a these little, legs. Those legs, like, those legs, they don't mean anything. Now they start <laughs> kicking around like a damn bug on his back. <laughs> Mind you, you did say you you were talking a lot about your submission of Jake in training. Like last hey, week. I never said, I never said, I, I never said he tapped. But you Dan, Dennis would. seems to think he sort of tapped. <laughs> Just who here is undefeated in MMA? By the way, oh. um, that'd be me. Yeah, that'd be me. Yeah, <laughs> never, never lost an MMA fight as a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I lost in the amateurs. But yeah. Yeah. It's all right. I'm undefeated in Muay Thai. Yeah, I, 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 I believe I'm undefeated in Muay Thai. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, um, also this weekend we had the charity rollathon kick on here at Absolute MMA Collingwood. Yeah, yeah that was so the, for the Dylan Olcott Foundation, organised by Matthew Jens, who's one of the members in the city. Okay. Um, I read not from him, but from someone else that they raised a grand. Which That's is not bad. Right. What did That's you say the charity was for? The Dylan Dylan Olcott Foundation. And what does that do? It's for I don't know. It's something to, no. like Dylan Dylan Olcott's. No, I thought you gave benefit, a description and, earlier. And it's Dan. something to do with disabilities in sports, but I don't actually. So they get spe- like special. Is, is it all right to say special? We're we gonna have to cut this out. I don't, I, what, what, is the, what is the terminology now? I think okay. it is. Oh, here is, it is. It, I don't know. It's helping young Let's Australians with disabilities gain self self restraint. There you go. That's fucking great. That's oh maybe that's. not even about sport. Whatever, it was a good thing. Yeah. Glad that it happened. All right. That's good. Wonderful. Though. I actually came down uh, to pick up a package down here yesterday, and they had a, looked like they had a lot of people down here rolling. Had the barbie set up, cooking some snags, as it were. Right. Yeah. It's fucking grass. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, also on the weekend. Oh, there's also <coughs> grappling industries. We yeah, had a big team. And we had grappling we have- industries, and I actually don't know who won what, but um, I'm sure we did great. I saw yeah. Bexod, had uh, Bexod Usmanov Usmanov. Posted a photo of some medals. Yeah, yeah. lucky Luke's bags got silver. I think I saw a picture. Bro, I rolled with Luke's bags on Wednesday at the CBD, and he is becoming a little bit of a problem on the mats. He's unusually strong. He's weirdly strong, and that's and where does, I was going with this. Weirdly strong and does, I would say, <laughs> unorthodox things. <laughs> but there's yeah. stuff like, Luke, that's not going to work. Stop that. It's not going to work. Oh, my God, it's starting to work. It's working. Is he, fun, yeah, is he no, I was by the Dylan Olcott Foundation? That- <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually like, but uh, oh, shout out on. to those guys over there at um, – Grappling Industries getting it done. We're pulling things, some things up right now. You should flick through that faster, Dick. Yeah, Dan, exactly. Otherwise, how are we meant to see this? Have you heard of Control F and then Absolute? <laughs> Control F, Absolute. Good God. What, what, why are you checking your emails now, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> What's, why have you got yeah. so many emails on penis enlargement? <laughs> anyway, guys, so also this weekend, we had Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz Jr., in the fight in Saudi Arabia, the big rematch. Everybody was curious how this one was going to roll. Did you guys watch it? Oh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately, I watched, the, I watched the highlights afterwards. But unfortunately, living in Melbourne, it was on at seven a.m. So yeah, got off the plane from Perth. What an absurd time! time. <laughs> yeah, what an absurd time to be awake. Um, but the big thing with it was, so Anthony Joshua slimmed down. He dropped ten pounds, so five kilos for all you Europeans. Down to do, wait. I mean the rest of the world, the, anyway, yeah, the unfree good. parts of the world. Liberty, have you heard of it? Um, anyway, so he came in at 237 pounds, which is about 106 kilos. Um, and Ruiz, who was slimmed down, slimmed to down. 283. Yeah. He's he was a mountain of a man previous to these things. He looked like he was carved out of marble. Did, like like to be fair, Anthony and Joshua did not have the physique. Previously, or even now, of like, like what you think of as a boxer, he looked like a fucking bodybuilder. Yeah, straight looked, bodybuilder. Like sh- like straight up, looked like something out of an out of a like an action movie. Yeah, and kind of didn't like fight real athletically. I think partially because of it. I think he just used the fact he's big and strong too much. Just relied on it. Yeah, 
So he fought like he fought like from like all everything I heard on this fight. Granted, I didn't watch it. It sounded like he just just clinched him, just it was jab, actually, jab, actually boxed him. Yeah, clinch, yeah, like he actually properly boxed. And Ruiz looked like he made ten million dollars and decided he didn't need any more. Yeah. So he just he he didn't want to fight. From yeah, everything I've read enough. and heard, now I could be wrong on that. As I said, he was I supposed to be like two twenty or something. Yeah, yeah. he was, was drumming up all this thing. So the same, he was, he he was slimming down on a new diet. And according sure. to what we've got up here, he was two eighty three. Yeah, I think homeboy. Jay, what happens there? You're a fighter. What happens there? I think I think I think somebody got on the old churro diet and was just going ham. But I, I mean, like I heard he didn't start training until September. So yeah, I heard he yeah he didn't have a hell. Of, but he was on Rogan, wasn't he saying that he he they he moved his whole camp out to Mexico and he had like a a facility and all this shit. I've heard other things saying that he was training himself and didn't work hard enough and. Uh, you know what though like I mean to answer that whole question I reckon you know you get a guy like that Jesus look at that uh, right. you, I, but isn't that can't. just the opportunity of a lifetime it's, 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 and it's an absolute or has he already had the opportunity of a lifetime and now he doesn't need it anymore I reckon that's what it is I think he finally got a little bit of that respect that he felt like he didn't have before see look at this photo on this so that's clearly been photoshopped actually this one on the far right that's not <laughs> real <laughs> like, like if, I think that's what everybody thought he was going to come and look at like yeah well that says he wants it for the Mexican <laughs> like a Mexican AJ for those yeah. listening, uh, unfortunately he came in, look, abs. came in looking like the Mexican butter bean and just didn't put it down I reckon though what, what you were saying Dan he um the I guy made like more he money than he was going to have it easy too and I think he thought because he put Joshua away in the first fight I think maybe he didn't take shit as seriously. He thought he was well, a better he's gonna boxer get than he for a trilogy fight anyway you reckon, so. are they going to do the trilogy is everything it, I read online Indicates that no one is interested. From what I've heard, nobody gives except a shit about the other people. Either one Ruiz and Ruiz, like, yeah, except for Ruiz, who wants lots. Of and money. He, yeah. he, he has the thing. He wants the payday now. Yeah. But the thing is, he didn't show up and fucking fight. I don't follow boxing that closely, but I now know that Ruiz is not in that kind of top three of Wilder, Fury, and um, Joshua. 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 So, like, he, he, he's not in that conversation anymore. And I put. No, I put now the, you've got the dark horse, the um, cruiserweight champ. Music. Ursic, 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 I think his name, last Ursic. name is. Can you pull that, Des? Can you can you pull that up? The cruiserweight champ uh, for, that's uh, moving up from the Ukraine. He's this guy. This guy, I reckon. That's he, him. yeah, Alexander Ursic. This guy's the dark horse. So he's bumping up. He was supposed to fight Tyron Spong in his first heavyweight bout, uh, maybe two months ago. Tyron Spong popped hot um, under the testing protocols, so the fight got called off. And um, this guy. This guy cracks. I mean, if you look at that right here, he's, he's, he's the WBA, WBC, IBO, WBO, ring, and lineal cruiserweight champ. Right. So this is the type of fight, I think, that makes a lot of sense to move up. Because cruiserweight's like the most overlooked division because it's, they're big and they can knock you out, but they actually box. They, they, they can move. It's, do the, the lay, bang, lay, well, bang. It's like when, um, when Holyfield, Holyfield came up. You know, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Holyfield moved. Everybody's saying, oh, the cruiserweight can't move by, up. By, Today's standards, Tyson's a cruiserweight. Like, Ali's a cruiserweight. Right? They're, like, they're all like 15 stone. Yeah, yeah. They're all like 15, yeah, 16 stone. Yeah, walking around. Yeah. Yeah, that was and, um, man, so I don't the know. Last, the last guy to do it would be David Hay. He yeah. Like, smoked all the heavyweights. And, and, he was and, just and every time they go yeah. up and they crush, because it's just like you said, these guys come in and they fucking box. They're not just these plotters in there, like, uh, you yeah, know, just trying like to hurt. Steve Cunningham hurt. almost knocked out Fury moving up. Yeah. Small, small guy. There's obviously some massive fights to make in boxing, but one of the things that's just really frustrating is that they just take a long time to happen or they yeah. just don't Or they seem don't, to happen. yeah. They can never You've got come three back. guys that need to all fight each other, maybe in a three-way thing. That'd be weird. But <laughs> they, just, they just need to settle that, and then we have a, a top guy. Yeah. That kind of, like, rivalry can bring on, like, a big error in Not heavyweight boxing, but... I just don't see it coming together. Well, and, and there seems to be some sort of issue with, with the <clears throat> WBC. I don't know if it has to do with the promoters or what it is where you've got on one end of things, you've got Fury and Wilder, who would seem to be going back and forth. But there's nothing, no, there's no crossover between them and Jacobs, who has the other belts. I don't know if it's if, it, mm. if it's coming down to their promoters. Joshua. I guess it would be the management teams. stuff, Joshua. too. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. The management and side of things where but it's and that's the thing that you know people used to get that's it. everything wrong with boxing that's what that, it is and that's yeah. why why MMA became so big because yeah. they were in a small small pool a small pool where they're all fighting each other and, but like, now we're now we're kind of running the same things in MMA though too where you're it's getting starting to get back to that when to get, things were separated with Pride and UFC it used to be a bit frustrating yeah you never got those big matches yeah 
it was good when the UFC kind of took over everything, but it's starting to it's, split it's again starting now. to splinter again. Yeah. Right now, you're getting guys. You're getting is is your best welterweight in Bellator in uh, Douglas Lima. You know, is yeah. you know is is the best middleweight somewhere else in the world. You know, probably yeah. not. But I mean, it's probably his name's Joel Romero. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, we saw it kind of with Ben Askren, where we've got a king over across the pond there. Who's yeah unchallenged and looks unbeatable yeah and fortunately got to see how it all panned out when he came well, over to the UFC all panned but out fucking five years too late too late mm. but I mean it's, it's you, you, you miss the like as a fight fan oh, you kind of miss that. those opportunities yeah. that's Mayweather's that's fucking classic career. example of it huh? yeah. that's Mayweather's career yeah you just get managed and matched well guys that you good guys but Draw it out long you, enough. Yeah, wait until or, they're almost at the end. Or or you get them too early. You take yeah. a Canelo before Canelo's yeah, before Canelo. Before he's built, you know what I mean? You know, I, that, that, well, I Meredith is the king fight. of timing, not only in his defensive boxing, but in matchmaking. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, he's going to be a star, so I'll box him now, I'll get his name on my list, and then... Yeah. I never, you know... You ever I already beat him, done. Let's yeah. do it again. Everybody talks all this shit about how Mayweather's stupid and stuff. That man That's is not. Smart. That no, man is not. He might not be kid. able to read, yeah. but he is switched on. Yeah. He's got. He's. He's. I think he's the guy that's smart enough to surround himself a with great trainers and great business people because everybody's like, oh, Mayweather's broke. He's got to decide. That man ain't broke. It's all branding. Yeah. It's all, he's very good yeah. at yeah. pushing yeah. his brand. Yeah. yeah. It's very it's smart. Like he puts guy. on his own shows now, so he gets the cut the promoter would normally take because he I'm, promotes himself. I'm still waiting yeah. to see Hank find out that he's fighting on the rising card on, on New Year's. <laughs> they'll, they'll make yeah. that announcement three days out. Um, anyway, <laughs> off of boxing, uh, we watched, uh, I actually did watch this card the entire 19 hours of it, the UFC. Oh, it was so long. DC. Why was it so long of a card? It was ridiculous. It just took How many a, fights were on it? Was it just, or just so many decisions? I, I don't know if it was just the pacing or what it was, but it, I, I swear it didn't finish. I started watching the fights at 11 or 10. Oh, see, I started here, 10 and, I did, prelims, and I didn't and finish. I yeah, we were texting each other. In the, in the evening, yeah. It did finish till 5. <laughs> no, it's still got 5. Because even like the big knockouts, late. Yeah, like yeah, in yeah. the end of the fights. And in that, God, did you, I mean, freaking over him, four seconds yeah. to go in the fifth round. Like, is it... It is, but isn't controversial because there's no yeah, way. If you got it. if you got hit one more time, so we can run this back though. Boom! Look at his lips. Oh, oh. Man. If, if you actually run this back to the beginning, I don't know if we have it on here. This whole series gets started with the same lead uppercut that um, Francis Ngannou hit him with. So you see, he's coming off of it here, then just oh god, hair lip city. Gross. So that for would everybody, hurt so much. Oh, that'd that be so really bad. For, for everybody who didn't see the fight and is just listening to this, he's getting hit with a right hook right now from Biggie Boy, and it splits his lip all the way up to probably... Up to his nostril, To huh? his nostril, yeah, to, his, to his, yeah, his nasal cavity in there. And oh, it's it, going up towards the cheek a bit more. It's nasty. Like that, it's oh, nasty. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> I've, I've already seen that photo shot. People have made it. Yeah, they're doing it already. <laughs> um, the crazy thing about it, though, is that over him was kind of doing the over him. He was keeping the pace, kind of fighting boring, throwing kicks and shit. And then the fight is ended with four seconds left to go. And that is the thing that kind of keeps me interested in heavyweight fights. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. they get so boring. They get so boring. Like, oh, fuck, I got... I, but like the interesting thing like Beast when he did uh, yeah, uh, the Russian fight. Yeah, and he was just getting school. And yeah. it, was like, it looked like he was literally just... Waiting for it to be stopped or quit yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, then, and then he just asks his... Crank! Like, yeah, and you're like, what the fuck? Like, you like literally just did not see that. that you didn't see it coming. coming at all. It's, it's the same thing with this one. Yeah. I don't think with this is... It was, a good, shot, it was a good shot and he went straight down, turned around and walked away like a walk-off. Yeah. But maybe I hadn't jumped in yet. Yeah. So he was walking away. Then um, Alyssa stands back up and he's like, oh, no, actually, no, carry on. Oh, no, actually, don't. Turns back in. So it's like... I mean, don't get me wrong. If he hit him again, he would have been fucked. But the um, the walk based off, on the status of his face, yeah, he, that, that fight was done. It probably should have been called. Yeah, the, uh, based like, on the severity weird of the four cut. seconds. I reckon that was four seconds to go. You yeah, but it's not the referee's job you to keep an eye on the time nah. and the con and the condition on the fighter. Yeah, yeah. in relation well, like, to that time, it they is, need to look at the fighter and see whether they're capable. Because when he did stand back up and he was always he still stumbled into the goddamn and he walked away. He would have got hit again in that time anyway. So it's like, and you know the thing is, I want I'm curious though if that walk off. Is it guys saving their opponent, or is it guys knowing that if I walk off, the ref's more likely to jump in than if I jump in and go for this TKO? The guy might. I, I think might it's wake because you up. see guys like um, Mark Hunt that are known for the walk off. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's fucking cool." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Who was it? it was Paul Harris did. A, he knocked someone out or did some celebration on top of the cage, <laughs> and the fight wasn't actually stopped. Well, that should it was be Paul Harris, right? Yeah, it sounds like a Paul Harris move. Didn't. 
<laughs> have you done that? <laughs> have you done it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was out though. What's that? <laughs> he was out. But the fight didn't get stopped. No, Kim Winslow is the worst ref in the history of refing. Yeah. <laughs> that, she was also a ref for the Vinnie Magalesh. She was my ref for the Vinnie Magalesh fight, which also should have been stopped. Don't care. You've got to defend yourself. Sorry, Vinny. <laughs> um, yeah, terrible days, Kim Winslow. I'm glad you don't ref anymore. I get a um, feeling that we're not comfortable about talking about that experience. Mm, about, what, about about me fighting Vinny? About you celebrating on the cage. As the oh, man. It's, I, no, I, think I, the cage. Cage. Yeah. I just I dropped a dude with a big right and just threw my arms up. because I don't, That was the third time I've dropped him in the round. Yeah. And it's just like, come on. Are you going to stop this fight? The guy <laughs> was on Queer Street the whole time. Yeah. And then I go still like could remember how to armbar. Yeah. Funny Why that. didn't you finish him? Why didn't I you got in and him? I got in and started fishing. I'm looking at the ref like, are you going to stop this fight? Dude throws up an arm bar and catches me. <laughs> <laughs> Classic JQ move. Yeah. I was, I got, I was really bad for early on. Perhaps like, he wasn't done. Yeah. I was really bad early <laughs> in my career for just laying ass weapons on people and then somehow getting submitted. Uh-huh. It was a bad thing. Luckily we're over that these days. Speaking of weird submissions, also on that card, Bryce Mitchell. Hit the second, second twister, twister. Yeah. in the history of the UFC. It's just a beautiful setup. I wish we had a little noise on there. Oh, it's just so cool uh, to say. Have you, have you guys ever been put in one of those? After, I have during um, training, not, not during a roll. That terrifies me. Yeah. After Don Hyung pulled off the first one. And I had no idea about jiu-jitsu. I was just like, what is that? Someone do that to me so I can... I was like, oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> we, um, so in wrestling, that's actually like... You get that as a pin a lot. He called it... It's a guillotine in wrestling. Um, it's just a different different setup for it. But Have you drilled the technique in jiu-jitsu? Have you actually tried to apply that submission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very hard to do. It's it's not there a lot. Unless like, you can reach over and pull their yeah. arm. That's like a 12-step thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't do anything yeah, by 12 so, steps. Uh, funny enough, I went and trained, <laughs> I've trained at Eddie, Bra- like at, at Eddie Bravo's 10th yeah. planet in uh, LA, and they were starting from the truck on that position. Yeah. And I got twisted a bit. That night. Like, I'd never... Because I just... I'm like, we're starting from the, you know, when they specific training, it was positions I'd never yeah. started from the truck. Well, and, 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 like, and Eddie Bravo, for everybody that is listening to this that doesn't do jujitsu, he likes to name his things really stupid things, yeah. such as the truck or mission control. It's like, why don't yeah. you just call it guard or high guard? Yeah. I like it. I do, like, do you like the specific? I don't like his names, but I like the, I like the idea that the, the techniques are broken down so you can actually talk about them. Because there's yeah. so many things in jujitsu that don't have a name. Yeah. And talking about it is difficult. Yeah. I, I can understand I think it's easy to get the, lost. The, the benefit of it. Especially when it's outside Ashigari. Yeah, well, like, yeah, yeah, Danaher yeah. does the same. Yeah. But he uses Japanese words for a lot of that, which is just... Which like, they're just translations of yeah. English words. Like, I don't really see the point in that. But. Because, it, oh, 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 because I think Danaher? It's useful. I think it's useful. Yeah. You you had some... You trained with Danaher a bit, didn't you? No, uh, yeah, I did a seminar and a couple of privates, but yes, it was an yeah. interesting experience. <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> 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 And uh, the but yes, it was. Big. I, I I will admit, um, I didn't know because um, because it was someone at the seminar had actually said, oh, I love it how you use the proper uh, Japanese terminology for everything. The name, I find it so good, and blah blah blah. And then that was in the seminar, and I had picked John up from the airport. And then earlier that day, I said, Oh, I can't remember who I was talking about. Oh, he does this move, something really good. And he's like, What move? And I'm like, Oh, you know that one. And he's like the name of it and I'm like ah it's some fucking Japanese name like some shit who gives a shit about names <laughs> and, I could ju- and I just sort of got that vibe like he was looking at me like you're a moron <laughs> and then in the seminar I found out that That's yes, he one. definitely thought I was a moron <laughs> so yeah That's anyway. alright he wears a rash guard all the time Yeah <laughs> um, anyway. And then the uh, the biggest fight of the weekend Tito Ortiz versus oh, Alberto Del Rio but Look for, <laughs> I don't even notice that you guys can take this one. Like, why are they fighting? <laughs> why is he still repping the 2001 flame print? Yeah. Punishment Athletics, like, bro. Throwbacks. Um, my, fa- my favorite part of this entire fight was Tito's post fight, you know, where I guess they that's had. That's a- all our favorite part. Come on. That's, <laughs> that's the only reason we watch Tito. The only reason anybody watches this shit is to watch Tito cut promos. He has lost his ever loving mind. Oh, yeah. He is gone. What happened? I haven't seen So that. he gets up and he goes, you know, I had a bet with Albert that he wasn't going to make it to the second round with me. He didn't make it to the second round. He tapped out in the first round, but I was going to give $50,000 to his charity if he made it. So I'm going to donate $50,000 to his charity. <laughs> uh, 50-10. He's right, donating 50-10. So. I think on the fly. 
Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was great. Oh, man. <laughs> Tito Ortiz. No, I actually want to watch the fight and right, the press conference. It's dances. phenomenal. And, and the, to, to like really get the whole thing going with it, the, the promoter of Combat, is it Combate, Combatch, or Combat Americas? I don't know how to say it. You call it what you want and sound confident. Combatch. That's Combatch. Yeah. <laughs> it's com- so Combate, the CEO comes out and says that Tito Ortiz is the best pound-for-pound pound fighter over 40 years old in MMA. Says this shit with a straight fucking face on. Over 40? Over 40. Daniel they, Cormier might have Daniel something. Cormier might yeah, have something to say good. about that. He's um, not bad, is he? I don't know. I, 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 Dan Tito, Anderson? <laughs> Tito's record Dan, is not that crap, though. Like so. Tito's yeah. got some decent names on his yeah, records. Yeah, but he's still. got some decent records from the 90s, bro. Like, Dan Seven still going? Is he finally retired? <laughs> <laughs> I think Fedor might have something to say about that ranking. What about Tank Abbott? Oh, Tank is, Tank is long <laughs> since done. Let's see if we can pull up this. I'd watch it, though. I would absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually interested. So here's here's a serious question. Tito's clearly not like stopping. He must need the cash or something. What what is? I think next Dennis is trying to make us have a seizure the way he's flipping <laughs> yeah. through shit on the screen. What what is next for Tito? JQ and Rise in twenty twenty. I think it's speaking. <laughs> that would be soul speaking to her. He can just cut the fighting I, out and just, just, just just go around and just just say things that don't make any sense to anyone. I want him to God put crash. me here to be a tool. Yeah. <laughs> no more of a true statement has ever been made, Tito. The greatest fight <laughs> hype. In, of all time, in my opinion, is the Tito versus Charles Sonnen thing. That was just oh, a, a battle of the minds. Went, I know, no. just, what are you I know, but Charles Sonnen... I see is, you reaching for those grapes. You're making wine and playing a violin or something. Like, he's just rambling. He doesn't Charles know what he's Charles Sonnen trash talk the best. Uh, yeah. who, who, like, actually, that's an issue. Who are the best trash talkers in MMA? I mean, Char- I reckon Charles. It's, it's, Charles. Charles is like... Charles Charles is day level. Connor was all right. Like, yeah. Not, and... You know, Connor had a lot of um, a lot of catchphrases. A lot of catchphrases. Easy, Connor, the, easy the beauty of Connor, stuff. Connor was quick. He was yeah. quick and he was on the quick yeah. on the uptake. But he and just he, he wouldn't he wouldn't kind no. of like break people down like Charles would. No, right? Charles' critique of people was very pointed. Yeah, to very them. very on point and like kind of those deep cuts. You know? yeah. Like, yeah, I'm gonna say he's a, he, he was a real he was a real mental samurai. Like oh yeah, say just Tito about his wife. Yeah, like he got about the what? Uh, I remember he made all the comments about Tito's wife, Jenna. Jenna. Oh, I don't remember that. Actually. Oh, some of the trash talk on that oh, was he actually well, like, the shit was completely savage. Well, he said some shit uh, to Anderson about how he's gonna have Anderson's wife cook him a steak and pat her on the butt afterwards and tell her good yeah. job. You know, like Charles uh, But I love the you know the whole. Um, I wouldn't have said all those things about Brazil if I knew they had the internet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was still one of the. You know, and, <laughs> you know, this is an, an excellent lead-in if we're talking about trash talkers. Colby Covington's fighting. Uh, Kamaru Usman coming up yeah. in uh, UFC 245. It's a massive card coming up. Yeah. Um, what do you guys? What do you guys? Well, I mean, first off, we I started with Colby. What do y'all think, Colby Usman? I think Usman, but I yeah. I would tend to kind of. I, I sort of think Colby he keeps on fucking pace though, man. I think Usman and I want yeah. Usman yeah. purely because off the back of the trash talking thing, Covington pisses me off. Yeah. You know, well, the funny it's, thing about it's just that kind of trash talk. I, that really I, I know, Col- you know, I know right? Colby personally, yeah. and he's actually a really good fucking guy. He's that's just, why it comes across as so bad. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's a complete work. Yeah. It's a yeah. complete work. But it works. <laughs> yeah, and they um like a lot of people don't realize this. I'll put it out there. Him, Connor, Nick Lentz, while he was writing all those poems and all shit, they all have fucking writers, man. They all have WWE writers. They're right now. Do they really? Legit? Yes. They have writers? That was yes. always speculated. I yeah. always heard, I don't know if you've got any insight on this, that Chael was kind of trained by the same people. Yeah. That he was kind of taught yeah, to trash talk. And so it's the same guy. I reckon I recall CM Punk so um, meeting with him. And uh, Do you remember the Anderson Silva, well. you absolutely suck? Yeah. Direct take off of a 1980s wrestling promo. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Same, like, same guy writing all this shit. Yeah. CM Punk was supposed to talk to him about what? My, I got you off there. Uh, I heard through a journalist friend that CM Punk and um, and Chow were kind of coaching each other on, you know, moving into MMA and everything. I don't know how true. I don't know if that's interesting. true at all. Um, speaking of a, CM, I saw an interesting thing on the interwebs this weekend. What's he done? That there's a good shot of him and Mayweather fighting in the UFC. <laughs> One boxing match. <laughs> one MMA bout. What? And should I... T- I saw it on the I internet. Mean, the internet doesn't lie. There's things. There's that also I'm... a fairly big size difference in between those two. Is there? Same punk. Same punk's not that... a big man. But he's. But I always just assume because he was a wrestler, he must be huge. But no. Should have been. 
But isn't doesn't didn't he fight lightweight or welterweight? He fought uh, welter. Welter, yeah. So one seventy, but didn't like Floyd's wasn't time. Floyd's? Well, there's one forty seven. Yeah, Floyd is a hundred forty seven pounder. So yeah, that yeah. might be, might be total dog shit. Yeah. I think anyway, great idea though. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> nobody wants to see that. <laughs> the big fight for the Austral Asia and the rest of the world, Volko versus Holloway. That's a great fight. That's a yeah. phenom- That's a phenomenal style matchup. Yeah, I, look, yeah Volko is fucking tough as nails too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Volko gets it. Like, yeah, I mean, how do you, I how do you reckon? I, I mean, I hope. I mean, I don't know if it's hope or I'm looking at it objective, like you know, because uh, subjectively, because I just really want Alex to win. But I think his style works well on Max. You know, with that, yeah, the he's pressure really just a long guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cre- pressure getting in, the up, the constant Fleet level Volko. changes. Yeah, how does Volko. he beat Holloway? Is he gonna like? Pressure him and Pre- break, yeah, pressure like, in, up, down, up, down. He's not going to break him, right? I, think he can break Alex him? breaks every. I guess pretty much broken everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah but Hall, he hasn't of, fought a Holloway yet, bro. Like, the, like Max is. Yeah, like, but it's one of them things. Like, Max you're is not fucking good. Yeah. You're not yeah. broken until the first time someone breaks you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's um. What's the? Uh, can you pull up the Vegas line on it, Dennis? I'm actually kind of curious. It's so, like how be interesting. you had Edson Barboza that was like could not be beaten for years by anyone Yeah, and lost a fight and just started losing. Yeah, once that yeah. armor gets broken, yeah. it kind of it's oh, makes it a lot easier. So I would have the same. So we're pulling up the odds here. Yeah, can, Matt Holloway be favorite, but not big favorite, I wouldn't have thought. I, I think he'd be, <coughs> I think it'd be pretty, pretty comfortable favorite. Yeah, I would think so. I don't speak your guys' thing, so you guys will have to explain Dollar 61, 258. Yeah, that's pretty big in, in yeah. fight lines. See, I'm, I'm, the, way, back, the way I always see lines, it's a Volko. plus and minus. But I don't know but I'd like to know how many Volkanovski. Check out the reach. Have a, if you, Volkanovski has a 71.5 inch reach and Holloway has a 70 inch reach. Well, Volko's got the Sean Shirk syndrome going. It's all, it's all across his lats and his back. Remember Sean Shirk used to have a longer reach than GSP. Did he really? Yeah. He's a nugget actually. Yeah, think about but it. He, if you look neck. at him, he's got little T-Rex arms, yeah. but he's wide like from... You know, he's got the... He's got and he the, used to be like 95 kilos, so... Oh, footy Volk? Footy Volk, Oh, yeah. footy Volko, he used to be a big lad. Yeah. <laughs> what, are we, what are we pulling up here? What are you looking at? That's okay. going to be a great But I, 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 I would say that they're Alex, they're gonna push push Alex was definitely underdog against Jose Aldo, Chad Mendes, Darren Elkin. He was at those kind of odds yeah. every time. Like, it's not like... Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, he's still in with a shot for sure. This Just is one of those great okay. fights where they kind of push each other in yeah. ways where you I've never think seen they'd him. be really strong. <laughs> okay. So the fight has the potential to kind of like be I've, just wild. Like yeah. really I've never seen him. Should we take a gander at the footy ball <laughs> They're running a great T-shirt. Look at the size of his face. So for anybody who's just listening to this, um, <laughs> we just pulled up a phenomenal photo of footy Volko. Footy Volko is a... Uh, the great T-shirt. Top, he's a he's a being that likes to come out when oh, yeah, Volko cool. when when uh, Volko's had a few too many cans of Chang and <laughs> likes to get after it a little bit. Volko, uh, I, I trained with him. I feel uh, like Footy Volko would get tired in the third round. Yeah, Footy Volko might get tired. So he um, he's got a phenomenal gas. Footy Volk he's, would he's gas. Got got the Footy Volk would gas, but UFC Volk no chance. Uh, gas, I've never yeah. seen a work rate like it in a gym. Yeah. He's fucking phenomenal. He yeah, the yeah. rounds that he did. Remember that day we had him Shark tanked him. One minute in, one minute in, one minute in. With three and guys. I'm like, I'd have been 96, 97. Yeah. And he was just like pacing me, pinning me, throwing me all over the fucking place. That was Next guy comes in, next guy comes in, next guy comes in. Where did you train with him, Matt? Here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Then he came down trying to be. I trained with him a bit when I was up in Thailand. And the guy's done a really, really good job of surrounding himself with um, with uh, good guys. You know, he's moved his camp. He's going, does his camps up at City Kickboxing now. They've all kind of got like a, a vibe going up there with because uh, Kai Cower France is on that card coming up with him. Izzy's always fighting. Brad Riddell's fighting. Yeah. Hooker and Hooker Hooker and Izzy would both be really good bodies for him, kind of to simulate, especially Hooker actually to simulate kind yeah. of that yeah, max the body long, type. Yeah. So I reckon I reckon he's put himself in a great it's scenario. Even, but let's let's I let's. I Roger for Max uh, for Volko would have been sort of good too. Like Roger yeah. stylistically wise for Max. I really rate Volkanovski's approach to fighting as well. He's extremely humble and willing yeah. to learn. Yeah, because like, after we oh, a, any here, session in the gym, spies. like based on the experience with him training here, he'll train with anybody and be open to actually learning something yep. in that training yeah. session. Yeah, because yeah. when we had that thing here, kickbox inspiring. I'm way longer, way taller, and um. A lot of people just wouldn't even bother. His, even his forward pressure just pissed me off because I couldn't keep on the back foot enough. Yeah. And I'm like, mate, fucking just slow down. Back but he would not slow down, would not <laughs> slow down. We made the three um, guys tied. Yeah. Like, he gassed out three guys in shark tanks. 
A lot of guys wouldn't train with someone your size if there's that much, yeah. if there's that big a difference. Yeah. Like they say, what's the point? But but he, he feels like he's going to get something out of it yeah, anyway. Yeah, because he was sitting afterwards talking about it and he was like, well, it makes sense to work with you because not only you're a kickboxer, but just learning to break that distance and right. what works and what doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then go straight from me. I think it was Elliot that was here that yeah. day who's 5'7 or something. And I think he'd be taller than that. Yeah, Elliot would be taller than 5'7. Yeah, yeah. He'd, be, he'd be damn near six foot, wouldn't he? Yeah, I don't know. Nah, I, don't I haven't trained him for a while, I'm not sure. But either way, like, oh, I don't Elliot's know. the one. Elliot's a full the one different body type. Kind of, yeah, the guy yeah. The fish face. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's four very different body types, to back to back. To back, to back. <laughs> What's that? Elliot likes his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so wait, here's a real question though. So let's say Volko goes in and Volks Holloway. What does that do to Holloway's career? I mean, does he? Does he? Do they rematch that? Does he? Does he move on? Max has had a. I mean, he's been on top for a while now. I feel like this has the potential to be like a uh, Rory versus Lawler kind of just kind of wild. Bad. Wild Hard dog match fight. that's going to kind of yeah. I think on, on that level, does that take years off an already damaged fucking brain, man? Did did to Rory? That's what I'm saying. I mean that yeah. that change. Robbie changed Rory's like life and career trajectory straight totally. up. Rory was going to be like the next JSP and hundred percent. And unfortunately, ran into the most violent brick wall to ever exist in Robbie <laughs> Lawler's fists. I feel like this is another one of those fights. Like the kind of I don't know. They, they both seem to be unbreakable to me. Yeah. Yeah. The gods of violence are with us on this one. I'm excited. Very excited for that. It's very it's exciting. Because I've been praying for no Alex injuries. No injuries. That much damage in many fights. I mean, he can take a shot, but he he doesn't. Like, yeah. I don't like, know that he's, 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 he's not in any blood. Blood. He yeah. hasn't been in any blood. I don't think he's been in any real dog like fights or anything no. yet, has he? For he just breaks, like, because he closes distance, breaks him yeah. and wrestles. The way he wrestled changes from attacking on the fence to then separating, hitting, and that constant up, down, hit, hit, hit. Yeah, I don't think it's he's like going he to be, be striking in the down. same way as Lawler versus yeah. McDonald, but it's going to be that kind of, like, I mean, he, he, attrition. He won the striking with Jose Aldo. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. And people would say, he had no right to do that, but yeah, yeah. He did, yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of Jose, have you yeah. guys seen these photos? I um, hope he's okay. He's it's, it's, he's not looking well, is he? So I saw his. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm talking about is Jose is dropping down to 135 pounds. So that's bantam. Yeah. I always get confused with these little weights. He so for I mean, look at him right there. If you're just listening to this, there's a photo of him pulled up from training recently, and he's um he looks sucked out. If you ask me, like he looks like he's like. Just done saunering. That's like what I'm he saying. He, he, he looks strong. You know when someone's doing a weight cut, they lose that kind of light yeah, in their you, eyes? You, he doesn't have that at you, all. You know when your face starts to get that kind of leathery, like um, yeah. almost pasty to it? Yeah. How far out is he? When is he fighting? He fights uh, this weekend. I don't know. Like, these yeah, photos have been that, running that, around for a few out. weeks. Like yeah. that, That's a long time Jeez. to be drained. He like does that. look shredded. Though, like well, and, I, and here's the thing. I read a bunch of, because everybody was talking all this, a bunch of stuff about it. And uh, one a guy in his camp got on and said that the guy has, the guy's never dieted a day in his life. And now he's dieting. And so, of course, his body's going to look different. But I have trouble believing that uh, an athlete of Jose Aldo's caliber has never dieted a day in his life. Well, he's describing yeah. his current diet as like two pounds of salad a day. Well, that's not going to Some work. shit. It's just not enough <laughs> fuel to train properly. Yeah. No, you can't do that. You know, just on on that Brazilian diet. Of like he acai might get through one fight, but there's, there's consequences <laughs> to pushing the body that hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, was there any other fights on that uh, UFC 245? The uh, Faber. Fa oh, uh, yeah, Faber's actually been looking all right. He's gonna it? look great until he runs into fucking Peter, Peter Yan. Yan. Peter Yan is to this day, and I maintain this anytime anybody asks me about it. The best guy I've ever seen in the room. Oh, really? Yeah. By leaps and bounds, the best guy I've ever seen in the room. He is an absolute freak. Yeah. Absolute, like the the movement and pressure and just weird athleticism that kid has. He's uh, he's he's a champ. Can we get Peter Young's record up? Thirteen and one in MMA. Who beat him? Yeah, seriously, who beat him? Who beat him? Was it early? Oh, Magomed Magomedov. That means. Yeah. I think that could be no, I think, I think funnily enough, that like is actually the guy that beat um, Jason Doug Stark. Like, yeah. Yeah. Where is he? Oh, yeah. ABC yeah, 57 I mean, payback. It looks like he avenged it two fights later anyway. What do you mean best guy in the room? In what way? He, I just mean like he's – when you see a guy like in the in – the, you know, when you see a guy on the mats training and stuff, I've, I've never seen a guy that is as dominant or as – just, I mean, just everything he does works. You've been with some, you've been in some pretty big gyms. Yeah. Seen a lot of the top guys training. Statement. Like, like what, what kind of separates him from some He's of the a, others you've seen? A, his, a, his work ethic. The yeah. dude, the dude is there skipping rope 45 minutes after practice, just ripping through. But it's not even that. It's just, I mean, the guy, 
he 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 out he outclasses everyone he goes with. I've never seen him lose a round in the gym, ever. Not even close. Not even, like you, a Tiger, I would see him, and it's not even competitive. Yeah. He's he's legitimately playing with world class guys. And even in the fitness classes, the entire uh, time, he's always going to be. He's does, does, does the last rep. When everyone else is fucked, he's still doing a little he, bit extra. And he's shadow, and he's shadow boxing, boxes in between. In between. Yeah. He's a madman. You and see him going to champ? 100%. Yep. Yeah, 100%. he is full on just 100%. like he's a high obsessed. level wrestler, Absolutely high level boxer. Yeah. Like, like he's, he's, that kid is something special. And I, how old, how old is he? I don't even know. He's young, yeah. man. He's young. Yeah. 26. Yeah. <laughs> How do people get that good by that age? I'm rubbish and I'm <laughs> way older than that. <laughs> I think it's growing up in Siberia. There's not much to do. Yeah, I've done lots of I think it's from that, um, that kind of background too where it's like, this is what I do, so it's all I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he's, he's dialed. Like uh, Peter doesn't drink and doesn't go out and party and all that stuff. Yeah. So just, he fucks it's nice, it's nice too. Yeah, yeah. Life. It's nice we're, too because um, we both live a Spartan lifestyle. Because uh, <laughs> he lives in Phuket, which is it's so easy just to go off the rails there. Yeah, just discover that side of the island. And, um, yeah, he doesn't seem to give a shit. Yeah. And then the uh, the last fight, we'll get over on this one. The last fight, not the last fight, but the last one to talk about there is Amanda Nunez and Jermaine de Ramadigabadu, the Iron Lady out of Belgium. I can't say your last name. I'm sorry. Um, Amanda Nunez is the only remaining champ champ, correct? She's the only remaining two-division champ so. in the UFC? I think, I think so. I think so. She is a fucking killer. I don't see her losing, but the girl she's fighting is very good. It'd be a good fight. It should be a bit of a test, but yeah, she's got legit one-punch knockout power. One punch knockout power legitimate one-punch knockout power. Yeah, knockout. which is so she, rare. She, crack, she, she cracks like I don't 100. I've had fought before. Have they? Yeah, just not going back oh, yeah. there. TKO elbows. Yuck. Yeah, Amanda's, Amanda's bad, man. She's She's a savage. Anyway, so that'll be a great UFC card. There's some more. There's some other decent fights on there, but uh, hey, Jake, are there any other fights coming up? <laughs> yeah. So rise in New Year's Eve. I got something going. Yeah. I, so you talk a bit about your opponent, who you got? And yeah. I uh, so I I just uh, they've just announced and everything. Um, fighting Satoshi Ishii. So originally wasn't the opponent I was meant to fight. I was supposed to fight originally the uh, EFC Africa champion. Uh, they called me up shortly before the fight was announced and asked me if I wanted to fight Ishii. And Jake's kind of downplaying his uh, excitement for this fight because <laughs> Ishii is just a, for for those who don't know the Japanese scene very well. Ishii was an Olympic gold medalist in judo. He's a massive, massive name in Japan. He's as big as it gets in Japan in terms of heavyweight fighting. Um, he is absolutely despised in Japan as well. Yes. <laughs> um, he hero Jake. He gave up his citizenship to um, become a Croatian citizen. So it's so fucking weird. Yeah, I, I think he formed some bond with Krokop after they yeah. had a couple of bouts, and he went after over there fights, to train. Yeah. And, and then um, I think he lives over there. He's, he's, no, he's, there. he's, there. he's, 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 well. he's very publicly I, announced. But like, like Croatia is the best country in the world. Yeah, he's, which he's, really he's, sits he poorly with a lot it. of Japanese people. Well, because the Japanese are a fiercely nationalistic people. I've they gathered are. since I've been my couple trips up there. Like they're they are a prideful folk. Yeah. Like I was reading online when uh, my fight got, or on Twitter when my fight got announced. This Japanese fan gets on there and goes, just talking about how he's uh, disgraced Japan and how he should commit subuku or uh, subuku. Yeah, like, like the, the ritual, ritual suicide. suicide. I'm like, yeah. holy shit, you guys go hard. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, because. Ishii is supposed to be of that class that, right. that is ultra nationalistic. He's right. an Olympic gold medalist right. in the heavyweight division. That's like the epitome of a sports achievement in Japan. And then he deserted them oh, man. to right. kind of give it to another country. So they absolutely despise him. And you're going to go into this as like an absolute. Yeah. Like, they need a hero. I'm, that, not the, I'm not the hero Japan yeah, <laughs> deserves. I'm the hero <laughs> they need. Yeah, this is going to be a great fight for you. And, and he's a good match as well. He's, yeah. He is a judo background. He has reasonable striking, but he likes to use it where he shouldn't use it. Right. So you're gonna you're gonna get a good opponent I'm, here. I'm very excited for the fight. I think it's I think it's a really good matchup for me. Just kind of watching his last couple fights and stuff. He doesn't use his judo in a way that makes it super threatening. He kind of yeah. dives on single legs or tries to kickbox. And anybody, I mean, we've kind of seen that in my last couple of fights in Rising too. If people want to get into a kickboxing match, I'm your damn Huckleberry. Like, let's play. It's just that, that's what I want to do anyway. I want to I get think he's given himself fight. some false confidence in how good his striking is because he trains with Crow Cop. 
Right. And like yeah. it's just kind of It's it's funny, like you see guys are they do that a lot. Like they'll get some success in it or they'll train with some guys in a discipline that's not their own. And then they start one dude's like, Do you remember remember when Damian Maya thought he was a boxer for a while? Yeah. He, he Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> Unfortunately that fight with Silva, God. <laughs> they just tried to fight Anderson on the feet, it just made it real bad. So you know what? If Ishii wants to stand her bang, it'll be great. But you know, we're ready for everything. The uh Big fight. What's fighting in Japan like, Jake? I, I think people have romantic notions of fighting in Japan. They you should, fought all over should. the world. What's it like? Japan's the best place I've ever fought. Straight up, like it's bro, it's it's amazing. Like it's it's a tr it's it's so weird. Like the biggest thing I think that stri that tripped me out the first time we went up there. Um, I fought uh, Jiri, who's the champ now, and we're fighting in Saitama. And you walk out, it's all crazy and nutty and everything. Like those big walkouts that everybody you know you hear about in Japan. But then once the fight once the fight starts and that bell goes, it is dead quiet. Is that really that disconcerting? I mean, <laughs> I hear fighters. I, I've been there, spent a lot, lot of time over there. Yeah, I know it's quiet, but is it that kind of well, it's, different it's just, in terms of like? It's just so weird. Because we're, we're you're used to you can to, hear your corner. Huh? You can hear. I can oh, hear. Like, yeah. I just remember you, like it was like I was just talking to him next to me, like like, like having a car, like talking to me at, at this this volume that we're yeah. talking right now. Yeah. So it's it's weird like used to coming from like when I went over there I'd been I'd fought in you know World Series and PFL and some pretty good sized shows you know where you're getting loud crowds and stuff, and then you go there and it's there's forty thousand people there and it's. But they're responsive. If you they're, do something good, they respond to but that. It's but not it like they're silent on. through the whole thing. No, but it, I it's just it like doesn't a, go on though, does it? No, it's it sort of like that. Or you almost a recognition get like a golf of the technique. Clap, like but something but good the, the you pass half guard and like, oh, but, yeah. but, and that's, and that, but that's the <laughs> that thing. Won't so they're they're not. <laughs> yeah. So but that's the thing. They're not Stands just. They're not just um, clapping for big hits and big knockouts and flashy shit. You pass the half guard. Like they're excited about it. they're they're the most educated crowd I reckon I've ever been around. Yeah, they, they have a really in depth understanding of what's happening. They understand like like a lot of times in the states or in Australia, you know, you see a guy throw up a loose ass triangle and people are like oh, doesn't happen in Japan until that thing is locked in and the pressure's down and and then when they see the when they see the posture broken, then they then they're like oh, they get going on it. it they're they're very very educated man like. I, get, I think I get. it's a different demographic. You get a lot of people in the West who watch fights, who like to watch Violent. fights. Yeah, yeah. Violent fights, right. fights. Like the best part of other sports is where the guys kind of fight each other. Right, or NASCAR. They're, or they're you can just, crashes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fight fans in the West love watching fights. But in Japan, yeah. I think they're like fans of martial arts, fans of combat sports. Yeah. They're, they're, they're interested in the technical aspect of things, and there's a long history of pro wrestling, yeah. which is actually really technical over there. Well, and it's probably, has a lot of links with with um, mixed martial well, arts. And, as well. and pro wrestling in Japan, it was a it was like a proper combat sport. Yeah, like uh, with the with the strong style and all that stuff. Does like, it make you fight different over there? No, I don't reckon. Like I I, I enjoy the the style that's legal there. Like it's like it's soccer, like the, I feel like the rule set, especially for Ryzen, not necessarily even the. Um, the pride real set, the fact that in Ryzen I can knee to the head on the ground, I can throw soccer kicks, and I can elbow. Elbows are a pretty big part of my game, especially in the ground and pound and stuff and in standing. I've developed them more since training with Joe because he likes to hit me with him. Mm. <laughs> um, Sorry, mate. It's, it's, it's worked out really well, though. You know, it's... um. I like I um I I don't know if I've announced this out to, I can announce it on here too. I've I've just signed a four new four fight deal with them. Like I'm extremely happy there. Congratulations, that's Thank really you, good. Yeah, yeah they, that's a real career as well. Like people kind of get these days, a lot of fighters get UFC as the career to make. Yeah, um, like yeah. that's the goal. But you, you've got a real yeah. career for yourself over yeah. there. It, it, and it's a trip, man. Like, Joe and Simon can talk to you a little bit, too. Like, bro, they, they treat us so well there. Not, not that was just the, the, the big difference because I fought a bunch of times in China. And it's big shows, like 10, 12,000 people. Yeah. Production value is similar. Like, huge fucking firework displays, fighters, parades, whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing with, like, the, uh, <clears throat> the fans and the crowd understands it. So, like, yeah. silence. Land a kick. <laughs> right. Then back to silence again. But the difference is in Japan, the promotion really looks after the guys competing. And in China, they just don't. Yeah, it's awesome in China. Like, yeah. <laughs> China going to China. Yeah. Like I've been there, um, fought one time, 12,000 seat stadium. Yeah. Big payday, big show. It was great. 
for the Chinese champion and I was staying in a fucking university sports dorm. Yeah. With like all these other guys and like two guys to a room, just like. Yeah. Not the not, not the case in Ryzen, bro. Yeah, just all, just all tucked up. And then you go to Ryzen, you're just like, fuck, I'm in like a suite. This is <laughs> this is sick. You get the, your own corner room. No, but like, but, but any on top of any of that shit, like just like the level of respect and stuff the fans had. Like my first fight in Ryzen, I lost. Got a... Uh, Technically TKO'd by Jerry. I want that fight back. I was still on my feet. Um, and But, I mean, the fans treat you the same, win or lose, as long as you show up and fight in Japan. And promotionally as well. It's not like a loss sends you back down no. to the undercard. If you put no. on a good performance, like, they're, they're, you're, there. you're an entertainer over there. Yeah, and that's, as, it, as much as it is a sports competition, you're an entertainer and that, there. And that, I reckon, is a big, the biggest difference, is people really underestimate how important the walkout is, the the interaction with the Japanese fans, because in like, I always say with the Japanese fans and try to explain to people out here, like uh, they don't really know much about Ryzen or anything. And it's because they don't give a shit about the West. Like as a promotion, like they're, they're, they're Japan. Ryzen is just concerned about their Japanese. They're market. not trying to be UFC. No, not trying to do it. They're, they're not concerned. And I actually kind of like it like that. Like it, yeah. it's kind of nice. Doing like you, you do pretty big walkouts. Yeah. Do you, do you enjoy <laughs> that? Is that like, you I don't seem it. to be a guy that needs to have an extensive pre-fight ritual in order to get your mind straight for no, the fight. Man. But I don't need to see it. No, you I'm, enjoy I'm the not. big like is there pressure to do those big walkouts? It's it's not pressure. It's it's actually it's actually worked out really well um doing the walkouts. It keeps me it keeps me loose, man. Yeah. You know, and you get a nice little warm up going in. Yeah. I love seeing these two. I got Simon <laughs> and Joe back with me every time backstage while I'm like making them get me dressed in these ridiculous Sat outfits. <laughs> Saturday night like, fever. You know, like but the thing is like you see it so often where guys are like, oh they're getting hardcore and like backstage and they're acting all crazy and stuff and like I can't do that like I got I got to go dance my ass off right yeah. at time and it gets you keeps you loose gets you all, gets you ready to go so do you keep that mind state as you go into the fight or you kind of flip flip gears as you kind of face off with him in the Man, middle I've, of the ring or like, what happens there this is, here's, this is there. he's pulled up my walkout from uh, my rookie Martinez fight um he was that was a great fight, by the way. I'll tell you what, man. Hey, hats off to Roki Martinez. That dude is as tough as they come. That was it. That was yeah. that was a heavyweight fight right Hit there. Him clean on the chin, like first round. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is done. <laughs> oh, no. That, maybe, maybe not, but maybe we're not. still maybe, going. Maybe we've got three more rounds of this. So here, here's the... See, and this, this is the thing, like, with these walkouts. They're playing the, my uh, Star-Lord one here. And, like... This is the type of shit that, like, I, I grew up watching Pride. Like, I was yeah. a big Pride guy. So I saw, you know, you saw the Genki Sudos and the, you know, the, uh, guys like that. Um, even the Sa Sakuraba, Sakuraba yeah. and things like that. And it's just, you know, that stuff stuck with me, man. Like, yeah. this shit's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be entertaining. Like, I don't, I, I don't, like, the UFC, I really feel like, has, has taken so much individuality away from the game. Totally. Yeah. That, that was one yeah. of the, like, real point of differences between... Yeah. The UFC and Pride back in the day is that yeah. you, you, Pride was building you up, and Risen's the same. They're building you up as like a superstar. They're they, building you up as a superhero. Well, they build, it's they, not even supposed to be that real. No. You're kind of like a character. No, they, they want to tell stories. Yeah, They're, that's the whole thing. Like they, they get like these ideas of like the story that they want to tell. Yeah, in the fights, and I and I love it, man. The that, original it, matchmaker for Pride was a literal comic book writer, and he did all of the storylines and character creations and stuff for yeah. Pride, which is great. I love it. It's great. It's, it's yeah. and like and like how like, so much you, sense. I mean, how many how many have you been to live what? in Japan? Oh, hundreds, I hundreds no of idea. shows. Yeah. And like like is it all is it <coughs> the Pride shows? I'm sure with the with the big ones. But like, is it is Ryzen on that level like yet with Pride? You reckon or are they still kind of? Uh, Pride at its peak was absolutely enormous. Absolutely. Like, and there was what also made it bigger was combat sports in general was bigger because you had K1 going at full okay. force as well. So. On New Year's Eve, it's traditionally the biggest day of the year for watching TV in Japan. Um, it's just like a cultural thing they do. Everyone watches these ridiculous specials that they put on TV. Yeah. In the early, like, 2013, 12, that kind of time when Fedor and Krokop were, like, at their prime, those things were just drawing enormous ratings on TV, like 70%. 70 you had Akabono versus Bob Sapp, Sumo versus... Bob, Bob Sapp <laughs> doing a kickboxing match. That did like an 81% rating on TV. That's, that's like 100 million people watching this. insane. Like, that I, was a super, rubbish fight. The Super Bowl enormous. doesn't do that much. Bob no, like no. A perfect like, example of building someone into just a character. Yeah. Like he lived that. 
Oh yeah, he, totally. he lived that life. Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's amazing over there. Like, I mean, I don't know what, it, what how did you guys dig it when you guys go over? Yeah, yeah. R- Risen's yeah. not as big yet, yeah. but it's it, it certainly. I hope it's headed that way, man. It's a, it, it feels on that same tier. There's all there's all these different tiers of shows. Well, it feels know. like it's bigger than Dream. It's that A grade tier, of yeah, like top level show. Yeah, it, it feels bigger than how what, like Dream. I think was doing the thing there for a little while. Dream for everybody, anybody doesn't know was the it was the one the kind of the second coming. So Pride got put out yeah. of business after they got experienced exposed as having some involvement with the Yakuza yeah. and the um, the director or owner or president or whatever of Pride, Saki Kabara, got banned from promoting. I think it was for seven years. Yeah. Um, and he went and ran a soccer team in Okinawa. And the staff from Pride created Dream and that didn't really... Didn't really take off. Didn't the- really like reach the same level. It was always kind of... Just running until Saki Kibara came back, and he's back now, which is what yeah, Risen is about. Is him, thanks, thanks to the job, Saki Kibara, son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's because he's there at all our stuff now, and he's 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 running a hell of a show. <laughs> yeah, I like I don't know, man. Like I, I've always ever since I got into fighting, I always kind of saw myself. That's where I wanted to be was in Japan, and then Pride fell. Well, Pride fell before it all, all that happened, but I was just like, fuck, like you know, the because everybody's always asking, like Jake, when are you gonna sign with the UFC? Why don't you go into the UFC? Why don't you do the UFC? Yeah. Like, fuck I don't that. want to. You're ma- I'm not going to say what you're making. You're making more than you will in Risen than you would in the UFC. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and it's and a lot more fun. The there's, yeah. there's, there's less that's pressure the for it um, as well. Like UFC yeah. is like you win or that's and the end of your career you're and then you're done. You're done. You are done. And like we were just talking to one of our, yo- our younger fighters here today when we were talking to Lyle. Yeah. Lyle, you know, you know, he's got a good shot of getting there. And it's like, but the thing is, like, if you get signed to a show like the UFC early... And like you know, they don't. They're not. They're not taking care of you unless you're a fucking. Unless you are a guy from an area that they absolutely need, or you move the needle, they are not looking out for you. They're not giving you easy fights. And you kind of need to break company policy a bit in order to move Even, the needle in the UFC. Yeah. And it's kind of a dangerous step to take. You do see some people who yeah. have tried to make a statement in the UFC and just failed. A bit just, and they get buried and yeah. they're done. Yeah. And it's, you know, the thing it's a difficult is, place to have a big personality and Jake, you're someone with a big yeah, personality. Man, hey, I'll tell you what, man, Ryzen was kind of, I'm, I was, they're kind of semps like made perfect <coughs> for me. The, um, the thing I wish, the thing I, the one thing it had sucks about it being so like in Japan though, is people, people see the UFC as like a different, they see it as that, that A grade, right? Like you were saying earlier. Sure. And like, sure, let's 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 call a spade a spade. I mean, the best fighters, pro in most weight classes, are in the UFC. Yeah. But that being said, there ain't nothing saying that like you can't take half these guys from Ryzen and plug them into the UFC in these weight classes. And they're not going to go beat the shit out of somebody. Or yeah. got, you know what? Bring I mean, some, you had Horiguchi who was like a top. He competed for the. He fought the shot. He fought. Yeah, he's the only guy that he lost to was Demetrius, and he got him very young as well. Yeah. I mean, there's top guys in 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 Japan as well. I think also sure. Japan also puts probably the stylistic and the stylistic style of fighting above just the winning. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they have a chance. Yeah, they just want to make striking good matches. actions. Yeah. I don't think they want the guy that's going to lay wrestler, the, grind, wrestler yeah. take down, sit on top, ground and pound, and make boring. They want, you know, you're an want, entertainer. You're yeah. there. You're there. Well, yeah, and they make, it, they yeah, make no, it very clear that like you're not here to like go out there and fight. Do they put pressure so on you to be an entertainer. Rain. Like, do they say no, no wrestle, Jake? <laughs> do they you say know, that? I I don't. I I've heard these things have been said, but uh-huh. <laughs> like you know, they 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 encourage you to go out and fight. Yeah, you know, they want they want to stay. They don't. They, they are don't, they coaching you on your like approach to fighting, your entrances, they, your they, personality they in the media and stuff. They definitely give. Um, like I, I have, a, I'm lucky, man. I have a really good relationship with the matchmaker with uh, Shingo uh, Kawajiri, and I can't actually say his last name. I just call him Mr. Shingo. But um, <laughs> he, um, so we go back and forth a lot with like my walkouts and stuff because there's certain things that like because Japan is kind of an isolated place that things might not play well there. Sure. You know, so we kind of go back and forth a bit on those things. Um, as far so he helps me out with that. And then as far as the fighting goes, man, I, it's not something they really have to worry about with me. I'm not gonna go out there and b- double leg somebody and belly button wrestle. You want to lay and pray kind of guy. Not really. I'm not. That's not really my. It's They're going really to subliminally make that a thing by having it in the ring, so you can't just press. Yeah. Because you just fall out. If you lay down, they literally just poke you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> so literally, when I, like when I was fighting Roki, I get my, uh, he dri- he drives a double leg into yeah. the into the ropes. Yeah, so I yeah. got my ass hanging out the back end. <laughs> I got the refs pushing on my ass, keeping me back in. I'm thinking, they've got to stop this and reset it. And like, no, 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 no
The Took one thing they do, do which one. is different than the UFC, that makes a big, big change in the way the fights play out, is I don't know if they still do it actually. They have the yellow cards. Yep. Yeah. Which uh, is for inactivity, purse deduction. Or for kicking people in the balls. Kicking people in the balls. Mm. I did get a yellow well. card in my Shemitov fight. And it is a it fi- takes it from your purse. It's huh? a 15% purse deduction. That hurts. That hurts the bottom line, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, but the nice thing is, like, you know what? And like, I will never get one for a lack of fight. Yeah, they, I mean, the main reason you see him is inactivity. Yeah, yeah. but the uh, for the for the for the fouls, it sucks. But you know what? That <laughs> encourages guys to fight, man. Yeah. Like, well, encouraged. After that, I was like, take him down because I didn't want you to kick him in the balls again. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, and like, the thing is, like, the, I think the thing a lot of guys got to realize is um, the fights aren't um, scored the same way in Japan either. Um. They're scored. Uh, Raja. Raja? Jesus Christ. Raja? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Raja. Hello. Um, the fights aren't scored like on a 10 point must system or anything either. So, like, score them as a whole. They score the fight as an entirety, like yeah. from the whole thing. You said you wanted to play back the jury one. Looks like he's fighting CB Dalloway. Yeah. How's that go down? Man, uh, I, I reckon Jerry smokes him. CB's, CB's good, but he's a middleweight who's come over from the UFC. I was thinking, how big's. Dunaway. Love that big. I don't oh, mind you, photos of him, he looked pretty He looks jacked. Looks jacked. Yeah. Is, but. Is he, so he's coming over, he's coming over to Ryzen off of a uh coming uh, coming uh Jesus Christ. Coming back to a uh I just had a complete brain fade, guys. My bad. He's coming off of a USADA suspension and just said fuck it. Who is Dalloway? Dalloway, yeah. Right. So instead of uh Instead of like riding on suspension, he's just jumped over to uh, Ryzen. That's got to be viewed fairly poorly I, by I, athletic I, commissions. I can't see it? that they like it too much. Remember Bigfoot Silva got into a bunch of shit because yeah. he got banned. He said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go fight in Japan." Did Krokop do that as well? He got flagged, but Krokop I don't know if he fought for, during his suspension. No, he did. So he flagged. He got flagged for growth when you saw it first came on. Yeah. Uh, said he was retiring, and then fought in Ryzen. Yeah, I think so, retiring gets you out of your contract. It gets you out of your con- yeah, but unless they have like those. Unless you unretire, I feel like yeah, that like I feel like GSP be. can't like <laughs> I feel like GSP can't retire and then like unretire and get <laughs> unretired a new fight rising like it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that'll be an interesting one. I reckon I reckon uh, Jerry gets him. I am gonna fucking fight Jerry at some point this year. By t- in 2020, I'm gonna have one of their belts. Tell me what you're going to do to Ishii. I'm gonna knock him out, bro. Oh. I'm gonna put him away. He's got a big head. He's too. got a big ass. He's got a big ass dome on him. But the thing is, uh, Ishii's like chocolate, man. <clears throat> he melts under some heat. Mm-hmm. Boy, he's not ready. So as long as I fight smart and I come out and put it on him, we're gonna put him away quick. We've been working, Joe and Simon and I, and we've been working some good stuff to. I'm gonna put it on him. He he doesn't want these problems. Do you have any anti judo moves, or are you just thinking he doesn't bring that stuff to the ring anyway? Well, he doesn't bring it to the ring, but like at the end of the day, like. I don't suck at this either. I've been fighting a long time. You know, I've fought guys with good judo. I fought high level black belts. And, you know, Vinny Magales didn't submit me. Ishi ain't going to throw me. I'll carve his face off while he gets in tight. I ain't worried about it, man. Great. I'm doing this shit. I love your confidence. Yeah. This is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, enough talking about me. Fuck you got Nobody gets to know anything about my walkout. That's all. It's it's New Year's Eve, guys. You, you got to watch it to find out. Fuck, I don't even know. Naked. What, don't know what to expect. Naked. Nude. Hard Nude. gay. <laughs> <laughs> Razor from Mo. Is that, is that the lead in to that Joe, is, Joe's so, title? So, <laughs> that is the lead in. So we're gonna we're gonna move on from Jake in this one. Uh, we had Joe in here. We didn't uh, we didn't take any time to really properly introduce him or anything. For people who don't come to Absolute <laughs> around here, Joe has been a staple in here since before I got out here. Uh, how did you even find Joe, Simon? Uh, actually, the funny story was Joe, uh, one of many, but uh, it was I thought Joe was someone else. Do do a welcome back yeah. so that it's not a, not a weird cut. Yeah. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, ready? Three, two, one. All right, so welcome back. Now is your mic's back. nowhere near you. Okay. Yeah, sturdy piss breaks. That's why Simon's mic is out of, out of whack right now. <laughs> Had okay. to go have wheeze. Back to okay. talk about Joe. Yep. So <laughs> how, how I suppose we're going to talk about how we got Joe here. So originally, I think actually in my time training over one of the trips in Tiger, at like the MMA pro sessions, I was uh, wrestling or grappling with a Joe, and this Joe was pretty pretty good. And then I think you either hit me up on Facebook or you're looking for someone to train. Uh, I like come and coach. It was weren't because I trained with you guys because I was covering for Brad Riddell one of his yeah. sessions over there. The K one sessions. Yeah, and it was when um. 
all you guys did the gym trip, so I yeah. met a whole bunch of you there. And then I found out that Absolute was in Melbourne. Yeah. I'd moved over to Melbourne with my partner. And I was like, oh, there's a, fuck, there's a gym there, that Absolute. So I hit you up saying, yeah. can I come down to train? And you were like, oh, sweet. Um, you were pretty good. It'd be good to have you around. Yeah. Like, good grappler. And I was like, oh, I don't wait, really. wait what? That, that doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, no, I'm just a pure, like, kickboxer. I don't know what. And I was like, man, if he thinks he can't grapple at all, he's striking, he must be, like, off the charts. And Because his grappling was actually pretty good. Anyway, as it turns out, there's another Joe that yeah, looks that was, a bit uh, like this Joe. Yeah, shout, um, shout out Joe Ray. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe Ray. Joe Ray. Yeah, it's <laughs> nothing like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, he was white guy in Thailand. Like, you know, but Joe, Joe, Ray, Joe Ray, the Florida boy, looks uh, nothing like Joe from... Really? <laughs> Instagram handle at the time was like Joe Ray Jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it literally and, and as, as Joe arrived at the gym in Australia and you're like, welcome. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is not, not the guy. Well, I thought yeah. it was. <laughs> but then, then, um, yeah. Not that there's any regrets. Oh, actually. <laughs> well, there is many, but... We'll, we'll get uh, to that. We'll, we'll get, get to, to that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, um, you, you met them in Thailand at first. How long... You, how long were you in Thailand for? You were there for um, a fucking long time. All up, like close to five years, four and a half years or something. Yeah? I did um, a six-month trip that then just kind of... The Thai story. Didn't really finish. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone stayed else. For, like, stayed until I was broke. Pick. Yeah, stayed till I was broke, went home. Just got a standard like laboring job, worked for a right. little bit, made some cash. And I was like, yeah, fuck this. Thailand it is. And went back just with like one way ticket and I was going to ride it out until the wheels fell off. Yeah. And they did. <laughs> Eventually. <It's> so badly. <laughs> <laughs> what, but, um, um, what, where did you, where did you originally start training when you first Originally you went to Tiger because it's just like the classic. Yeah, tour Muay Thai, thing. Thailand training and Tiger's the first one comes up. And right, right. At this point, um, top team didn't exist. The, the Tiger Street was still a dirt road. Had, like there Tiger was, there was no 7-Elevens on it. There was nothing there. No hotels. It was just... Tony's and Tiger. Yeah, Tiger, Tony's. Dragon existed, but it was real small. Across the street was just this little tiny Thai shop. Got everything yeah. from there. Like no actual 7-Eleven. Had to walk up right. and down the street. And Tiger was still made out of bamboo. and had three rings. So, Fucking hell. Yeah. What year was this? 2000, early 2011. It's crazy to and think then, how yeah, much that place has changed. changed. It's fucking crazy. And then top now. team, top team exploded. Well, I say exploded. Top team, they were having the foundations laid about halfway through okay. my six month trip. Right. And then that just kind of snowed because it was the only other one. Right. That kind of snowballed. Then more hotels started popping well, up. Well, in between the two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then I went away and came back. And in that time, like Unit 27 popped up, like a strength weightlifting gym. Yeah. I was like, oh, another gym. And then I moved away. From the street, moved down to Rawai to a little gym called Kalpatak, which doesn't exist anymore, but just like a full Thai style gym. Yeah, and yeah. Hadn't been to the street for a little while. And I went back up and it was just like, fuck, it's a, it's a town. Yeah. Like it's, we it's used to own, like a it's little, little sandy thing, dirt street and now it's a full What's that street town. called? Soi Thai. Soi Thai, yeah. Did, did, did that not exist with all the foreign specific Muay Thai nah. gyms before yeah. Tiger? Nah. Because yeah. I remember yeah. when I was doing... Muay Thai bit. People used to go over to do, to the Thai camps, but there was nothing that was kind of for foreigners until Tiger came along. Is that right? Not really. Like, um, well, they just didn't market. To yeah, Dragon existed, but it was still a small Thai gym. Yeah, yeah. and because you go there now, and like all these gems popped up, like Ratachai's there, and yeah. I don't know what he's right. on. Chok Choy, but um, Chok Choy. But all the guys that have those gyms were trainers at Tiger when I arrived. Tiger and Eagle, right? Eagle yeah. was the uh, Eagle. No, Eagle, Eagle. Eagle's new. Eagle, it was Suet, or was it Lion? Suet. Lion doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Lion's down in Rawai. Lion's uh, absolutely. Lion's yeah. the new absolute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where but, you guys um, still have that giant lion head looking yeah. like Rowan Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like the I think we paint that thing up to look like Simon. This is a big Yeah, there was nothing really there. It was just um, gym for the sake of training. So what was the dream? Like, what were you th you're going to Thailand. What are you doing? Is it like, I'm going to see how far I can take my Muay Thai? Well, or is it like a, yeah, pretty like much, a lifestyle was like, choice? Um, how long have you been doing Muay Thai before you went there? I'm going to cut um, Four? Four years? So in, I, in, start, in I started UK. boxing when I was 14. And then having gypsy punch ons, mate. Yeah, it's a bit of parky boxing. <laughs> and then, um, Learn boxing off my cousin yeah, Tyson. Then, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's weirdly realistic. That was a home for a second. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, boxed for a few years, just amateur, and then um, discovered booze and chasing chicks and going out God and that. Bless America. So I had, like, had a pretty much a year off, just like living standard English life. And I was like, I was, I was quite good though. Yeah. Like, 
I should probably have a go back training again. And my mate was training at this little, again, it gets worse. Like um, he was training at, it was a village hall in um, a little village called Atterbury. Did you say hall or whore? Hall. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little village hall with, um, it was like three pound to rent the hall for the evening. Okay. And the warm up. <laughs> That's the, a cheap hall. <laughs> 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 and the warm up, our warm up, like we arrive in this big transit van, the coach. The warm up was putting the mats out. And the cool down was putting the mats away again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was just like a group of lads that like to scrap. Right. Le learning what we called at the time MMA yeah. and Muay Thai. To the MMA and, and Muay Thai. <laughs> yeah, it was neither. Like, um, <laughs> it was got, like the head coach was at the time, I think, a blue belt. If he'd even graded at that time. Right. But he'd like go and train at his gym in Birmingham and come back and teach us what he'd learned that week as best as he could remember it. And he went on, he was British champ in the end and he had some success. He was a British champ Muay Thai fighter. Okay. But again, it was still like, um, not pure Muay Thai. The clinch was lock onto the neck and do like 20 knees and let go. It right. wasn't It wasn't clinch. Isn't it wild to think um, that's where MMA was like 15 years ago? It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. No, it wasn't and, long ago. Like that's how I started as well. Like yeah. exact same thing in halls. Yeah. And people just learning shit. Just learning shit the they place. saw on the internet yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just and wild now, how fast things um, growing. That guy has his own for him, kind of upscaled a bit by bit by bit. And he's doing well now. Um, shout out Stuart Davis at BMAC in Banbury, doing good things. Banbury. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just like mad that he's gone from just training lads in this little village hall to yeah. having his own actual facility with like a cage and a ring, equipment, mats, fucking everything's there. But um, so it's cool to see that. But at the same time, it's like when he was doing that, kind of off the back of him saying, now nah, you could probably make something out yeah. of this if you went and had a. Had a good crack. And I was thinking like, it really came down to, I could stay at work, make, by now I'd be earning decent cash and be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Right, yeah. But then always having that what if. Right. And then, yeah, I went to Thailand, thought I'd have a go. I had a couple of scraps on the first trip there. So you went there with like serious aspirations to be I went a really there, good fighter? I went there to be like. Because a lot of people go there I'll for a bit of fighting slash I'm going to party a fair bit. That's what the first trip was kind of about, but it was like, I went there really silly because it was like, that's where Muay Thai comes from mm. and I want to see what it really is. I just arrived and got my ass kicked by Lamson Crown. Oh, Lamson Crown is the, uh, for anybody, maybe watch the old GSP lead ups when he was still in the UFC. Big, tall Thai <laughs> trainer. Big, tall Thai. He'd be like 70, he was a 76 kilo WBC world champ. Yeah. Like six foot one, so very tall for a Thai. Absolute clinch fucking gun. Yeah. And you fought him just no, as you no, no. He, he trained me. I trained you. But, um, <laughs> we arrived, and it was like, I don't know if you've seen the um, the tiger tryout the videos. Tiger tryout videos. Him and his brother, heads. Lai, are the guys that everyone was like, fuck, look at those two. Yeah, just yeah. beating and, um, the dog shit yeah. out of his because, I, yeah, because yeah, because <laughs> I'm tall and he's tall. He was like, oh, yeah, I think you big can. And clinched up and just beat the shit out of me. Like, choked me out in the clinch with like a baseball bat choke slightly modified thing yeah. I was falling over as I'm falling down he drags me back to my feet and just keeps kneeing me <laughs> just drops me on the floor and walks off to the next guy and I'm there like so that's what clinch is that's what it feels like why didn't he just grab my head and knee me yeah. twice <laughs> and then um yeah went back to the room just kind of disheartened like these guys are fucking good yeah and then went back to training again back to the room same story just getting bashed and then because I kept going back he was like oh no you come back a lot I think can train I train you mm. And took after me for like the first six months I was there. Oh, shit. Before I went back home to. Is that how it is in Thailand? You got to take a few beatings before you get trained properly. Yeah, or I is guess it just it's like in those days. I or? think it's their way of seeing if if you actually have what it takes. Yeah. You know is I mean? this for yeah. like people who want to become serious yeah. fighters? Yeah. And I think for him it was just kind of, I rocked up like six foot four. Yeah. At the time I'd have been like ninety something kilos. Just he'd shredded. have been like he'd have been like eighty. <laughs> he'd have been about eighty three, eighty four. I'd I'd guess. Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, another big four. And I got to let him know. Yeah, another big four. Yeah. And gotta let fucking, him know that ain't strong. Yeah. Are you no power? Kick the shit out of me, eh? And then um, just coming back and training with him again and again, started realizing, like, maybe I'm not as bad as that beating made me think I was. Right. And then had a fight and smashed this guy. Where is that? Now, that and, was your um, first fight in Thailand? Yeah, because I didn't know what the kind of go was. It was after the first, like, month. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I'll do a beat down. The, so the beatdown. Like the tiger beatdown uh, thing, like the smoker fights. So we still got shin pads and stuff on. Yeah. But I was like, well, 
I wasn't aware at the time that you can just arrive and fight in the local stadium. Mm. I thought you'd have to work your way through. So I was like, yeah, I'll do a gym fight and see what they're all about and just put it on this big Australian dude. Yeah. And I was like, well, that didn't seem fair. <laughs> you and just then, beat up a tourist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was a barbecue beat down 30 something. Jesus and Christ. And they're, now they're like 200 or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many. But um, yeah, after that, fought, like fought in the local stadium, a couple of wins, went home, like arrived back in my town like Billy Big Bollocks after yeah, yeah. after six months trip away. Billy like, Big and Bollocks. And I've come back. <laughs> so English. <laughs> Billy Big Bollocks. And I've come back home just like, yeah, fought three times, three wins. Yeah, fuck so yeah. And when you um, like break down like what it's like fighting in those early, the early on in Thailand at this Thai stadiums over there. Because I, I feel like people have like this idea in their head of like what it's like to fight in Thailand. Yeah, you have no idea what you're going to get. You it's a, it's <laughs> a full on lucky dip. Like I've arrived one night and fought a full-on tactic driver, 65 kilos, soaking wet. And I'm yeah. like, this poor fucking, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> and I've literally just walked around for like two rounds because I felt bad. Right. I was like, if I just keep moving around, they might just be like, this is stupid. Yeah. But then I realized they don't care. So punch him in the face. He falls over. Yeah. You get out. You get, get your 6,000 baht. You get your 6,000 baht. <laughs> fuck, fuck off. And get out. And you're like, oh, well, that was disappointing. Yeah. Then you see like one of your mates will get in for their genuine first fight ever. And they'll fight. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll fight. But like, I mean, first fight, full stop anything. Ever. Yeah. First time they've like, ever done they anything. Can, they, can, but they can barely spar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can jump in and have a scrap. You, you and they're fighting like the Southern Thailand. Southern like, double, The double diamond champ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just having a piss take down there. Yeah, just get cracked up. But yeah, you just never know. It's full lucky dip. But yeah, the... um And the whole make the weight classes is a funny thing. Man. Well, they pretty much don't exist. Well, I reckon at the, goes southern, on visual. at the Southern Thai stadiums, unless there's a belt on the line, they're not yeah. generally checking weight. Because of the way... I mean, they have a show every week. What yeah. is that? On, in Phuket now, there's... There's there's Bangla. There's, there's, there's Bangla. Patong. Bangla, yeah. Sonam, yeah. Rawai. Suet. Rawai, Suet. Chok Choi. Uh, Galaxy's a Galaxy. new one. Galaxy. Chok uh, There's a new stadium in now. Phuket Town. I don't know they're doing Thai there, though. That might be an MMA stadium now. Uh, TP, uh, the TFC one, there's a whole new stadium there. Oh, yeah. The one that uh, fucking, what's his dick owns? Tall, uh, tall the tall yeah. American that's um, that has the most fights in the world. Well, I can't mm, think of his name. Most, Will Chope. Yeah, busy man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fights every weekend. <laughs> but yeah, because they've got all those stadiums to fill, but then you've got like, Costa Marie's got a yeah. stadium and there's other like smaller islands around the area that will have to have shows filled right. there's a show every day that needs to have eight to 12 fights right so it's just like anyone that applies to fight will fight yeah like, if you want to fight if you're, they'll if you're, if you're from a there. gym no, i'm not saying you can just rock up and be like i want to have a fight have a, but like if you go to a gym for a couple of weeks and they feel like yep yeah they've got if you know a trainer you could get a fight pretty much <laughs> like, if you want to you know, toss them on they'll do it and they'll make a side bet on you based yeah. on how <laughs> based on how ready you are does anyone care if you win or lose? Like, do they track those things? Do people like if you're do a they serious have records if they're, going for people? If or? you're a serious fighter, they care more about a good fight. Yeah. Like if you're fighting well, or if, mm. even if like my mate, um, my mate Amir, who now trains at Evolve, mm. he had a few fights over there, and um. I say trains like he coaches at Evolve. He's, right. Evolve in Singapore. Yeah, good which coach. Which is a, a massive he, gym. Yeah, he was the first the first Singaporean national to work there as a coach. Okay. Everything else was imported ties. Right. But um yeah, he had a few fights there. When he was kind of very, very green to it. This is back in two thousand twelve, I think, early two thousand twelve. Yeah. And um because he was so new to it all, he was just like, I'm happy if I land a head kick in this fight. Okay. And he'd go out and try and land a head kick. And if he lands a head kick in his mind he's won. Like if, he, if he's knocked him out or not, he's just like, nah, that was my goal for the fight. Was right. to land this she said small attainable yeah. goals for so the fight. So every fight you do something different. Like it's this fight, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna work that's my- That's what you do in training, I'm normally. Gonna, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna work my clinch like this fight. Literally though, um, that's that's exactly what you'd yeah. be working yeah. like in sparring. Like, I'm gonna throw low kicks today. Yeah. If I yeah, land three, not, I've won. Because it's such a different thing of like, you have to do it for real when it's real. Yeah. Otherwise, your, otherwise, you, otherwise you can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact. But um. So how do you kind of move your way up in that world? Does your, does you your trainers win. see that you're just killing people and kind like, of put you in tougher fights? Or? But even that, you don't need... A promoter behind you? You don't need to what? win because I've seen guys go on like so, two or three fight losing streaks in the local stadium right. that all of a sudden spring up on Max Muay Thai so in Patea. Walk, walk, walk us through how it went for you because I mean, you, you had in one year, you had 12, 13 fights over there, right? Yeah. So you'd have gone from fighting at these, these base level <clears> shows in the stadiums to 
to fight at a pretty high level. Yeah, because that... I mean, um, considerably high level. You're a goddamn world champ. Yeah, that, so. that was what led up to it. Um, for... Was it 12? Yeah, 12. 12 times in a year. It was more than one a month, though, because I remember yeah. I had the end of the year off. So yeah, I must yeah. had a couple of months that was super busy, but it was like... Fight one weekend, win, don't get injured. Well, I'll go again, jump back in the next weekend. And what, what's the win. caliber of the cats you're fighting like and, um, early on in that 12-fight run? First guy... Ties, generally, or...? First guy, fat tie. Fat fat tuk-tuk? I wouldn't say tuk-tuk. I think he might have been a trainer Old somewhere. Because, yeah. like, he moved well. He was just, like, unfit. Yeah. Tough, durable. Put him away late with a body shot. Right. But um, you can never know, like... But what. a guy had a crack to him, though. Yeah, I mean. yeah. <clears throat> had to think a bit. Yeah. But, um... Then I fought a couple of other guys, like random big foreigner, but inexperienced. Right. Probably 10 fights or less or something. Managed to beat him on points. Bit of a kind of sloppy one because I wasn't right. really expecting. I was expecting another fat. Another fat, t- another fat walkover. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, then I fought another, I think it was Moroccan or something. I've seen that fight. I yeah. Think. I think that's the one. <laughs> sliced him. Yeah, it's the one you carved his face off. Yeah. yeah. He's bit, he's t- is that one, can we pull that up on here? Yeah, or no, is it's it? on my. Um, it's on your. It's on the drive. Yeah, we can't but, do it. Um, it's on the drive. In this fight, Joe, the guy, the guys of Morocco. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take over on this. Guy. <laughs> this dude is a, like a, a high level boxer out of Morocco, and you look at him, you're like, this dude doesn't look like shit, right? Yeah, he's he's a, kind, of a, kind of a fat, fat body. Yeah, little taller than me, sloppy as fuck, <laughs> skinny limbed, and I was like, oh, this would be fucking easy. <laughs> And then walked out and he goes, pop, pop, pop. Like, oh shit, my head, head's bouncing around. And I was like, oh, I'll try and clinch him. Missed the knee, got punched again. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, this is annoying. Uh, just getting pissed off and pissed off. Went back to the corner and they were like, oh, um, okay. Him hand good, him punch good. You, um, I think good for your elbow. Okay. And that was all like, okay, go. And sent me back okay, out fighting. there. And I was like, all right, sweet. So I moved around for like 30 seconds. I'm like, ah, fuck this, just charged in, big elbow, and gave him 17 stitches, like, ah. from his, he went from halfway down the bridge of his nose to his hairline, just oh, this huge cut. It's so bad. And, and like, just immediate leak like session, too. Blood everywhere. The referee's like, straight away, fuck this. And, like, it's it's rare in Thailand they'll stop a fight yeah. for blood. Straight but this dude immediately, it. was like, nope, no more, and no um, more. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. I get beat up too bad, but, like, realize that I, you need to kind of yeah. pay a bit more attention. And then I fought a trainer from top team at the time, a guy called Dan Bao. Bao. And that called Dan Bao. He was short, big, stocky guy, huge legs. Mm. And he was known as like a bit of a giant killer. Mm. He was knocking out. Big for long. Well, he knocked a couple of guys out from my gym that are sizably bigger than me. Yeah, yeah. And I had to fight him next because I was on like, what, three or four wins straight now, whatever it is. And then did him with a body shot. And he was like, oh, no, I'm not training. If I training, I beat you. I beat you for sure. Yeah, yeah. So then we had a rematch, and I did him with knees. Um, <laughs> again, caught him in the clinch. I managed to like twist his head round and fucking just unloaded some knees and give him a couple of nasty cuts, and yeah. they stopped it. And they're like, oh, he's beating trainers now, so that's a yeah. bit of a step up. So that that's a big step up. Yeah, you start, start it's about like beating the guys that are beating the other kind of big half right. decent foreigners. Who's watching you? Is it your trainers? And then the, your trainers trying to fight you? Maybe my trainers. Or is there a promoter then, um, that's running things? Like, would the Max Muay Thai promoters and stuff, would they be at the local shows? They wouldn't be there, but um, they'd know the guys. Okay. Like how at Absolute Thailand now we've got a tit, Kiat Chai. Like his fire yeah. name's Kiat Chai M.U. Den. And M.U. Den's a sponsorship company, like a group of Like cause he, they own him. Yeah. That's they own that's his that. contracts and whatever. So um, they're all directly linked to... Um, like Max and MX, MX and the big yeah. shows, and they all communicate. They're like, "Oh, I've got this. Bi- this big foreigner's looking a bit sharp. Mm. They'll keep an eye on you, sort of thing." And they make notes and see where you're going, and then it's kind of slightly better opposition, slightly better opposition. Right. And I fought a couple of like their national champs from whatever country they're from. Like I, f- I beat the Scottish heavyweight champ. I beat the New Zealand. Not yeah, I beat the New Zealand heavyweight champ. Then I beat the um, Malaysian heavyweight champ. And like on the back of Malaysian all Malaysian heavyweight champ, there is yeah. a heavyweight. You and big boys, uh, okay. and he's a big boy. He's a big. I've leg. never been <laughs> low kicked because similar kind of thing. He's about five foot ten, but yeah. the legs on him just huge, like yeah. calves, like your thighs. He's fucking massive. So and, uh, that's <laughs> a lot of calf. But um, yeah. yeah, there's a picture of me like I'm checking a kick and it's done nothing. Like my legs just gone blasted. <laughs> I'm like ah oh, yeah. Don't uh, don't wear too many of those. <laughs> We're gonna and not want to play yeah, that game. And just managed to like kind of outbox him, yeah. but terrified of his low kicks the whole time. Yeah, and ended up yeah TKO fourth or third round, like somewhere late in the fight, and then got taken to Bangkok to fight for the WMF World Title against um, what was his name? 
Your life had to be a big day in your life winning yeah. a world title. <laughs> <laughs> so while you think of his name, this is this is a question like I've always wondered. How what is the step? I, I fought in Bangkok, Bangkok once, but it was for MX. So you're fighting in a in a TV studio. Is it when you're fighting in those Bangkok stadiums? How different of a vibe is that to fighting in Phuket or like in the smaller island shows? What and was stuff? strange about this one was it was at the um, the MBK Fight Night at the MBK okay. Shopping Center outside, yeah, yeah. so it was all open. But um, yeah, it's kind of strange because it's. It's free attendance, mm. same as Thai Fight and all those, and like they make their money through sponsorships, right? And because it's free attendance, there's just people fucking everywhere. Yeah, Thai so Fight's like, crazy, dude, yeah. And Thai, Thai Fight's nuts. <clears throat> how many yeah. people show up? Yeah. And like, and big enough that you can't actually see the ring at all. Let how many people? The Thai Fight? Yeah, for those. Thai like Fight, I reckon there's fifteen thousand. Fifteen, yeah. yeah. And they're all, but it's all standing at one level. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, right. no, yeah. Like, there's like no. chairs. No. There's yeah. stadiums. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, there's just like chairs on the grass. And yeah. I normally do it like at a park or yeah. you know, tie fight's like a mobile production that they kind of. Yeah, the, um, the MBK weeks. fight night's always at MBK. And um, it was the WMF, it was their first professional promotion because they'd run all like the IFMA type stuff. WMF okay. and IFMA, and it's World Muay Thai Federation. Yeah, yeah. And I won the World Muay Thai Federation Pro, which is. um. It was their first big thing. And not to this guy, do you know Steve Panda Banks? Oh, yeah. yeah. He Trading fought him, the Iranian team. guy. Yeah. It was that guy. Well, they're fucking falling out the ring. He's, yeah. he's body slamming Steve, him, headbutting him. Steve's an eventual um, WBC uh, super heavyweight Muay yeah. champ. I don't know that he and, defended it, but he did win the but Yeah, the guy, the guy that I fought, I think Ali Akbari, I think his name is. I always forget which way around it goes. But um, they fought on Workpoint TV like a couple of years later okay. and this Iranian dude's head button him <laughs> like full on like double legs out the ring there's one where they fall out the ring and the ref tries to catch them but they're like 140 kilo yeah they're dudes. massive men and this little tiny ref's on his legs gets picked <laughs> up and full <laughs> slingshotted out the ring just but, catapulted yeah. out <laughs> and I remember watching this back because when I fought him we moved around a little bit and I was like oh he's kind of big he's, he's probably 6'3 or something and I was like I wonder if I can reach and just flicked a left high kick up in the first like 15 seconds yeah and it went, dunk, bounced off his head, a little wobble. And I was yeah. like, oh, fuck yeah. A couple of punches, he went down. Eight counts, stands back up. I got a mad flying knee, knocked him out. Sick. Yeah. Like, that, and that's for the WMF belt. And that's for, and that's for that, w the WMF belt, yeah. Damn, son. So that was sick. And um, <laughs> then I watched it, watched him fight later on against that Panda Banks, and there's just this chaos. And in my head, all I could think was, thank fuck, I put him away early. That would have <laughs> been a long night. He was bigger than me. Like. <laughs> oh, that's wild. So what happened after you won that one? <clears throat> um, I fought... Local superstar, Atit Pradipom Kiechai, who now works for us over at Absolute Thailand. But um, super nice guy, real crafty. At the time, crafty. <laughs> at the time I fought him, I was like the big foreigner on the scene, hadn't lost for that year at least. Yeah, yeah. And um, he was on, in the local stadiums, three fights unbeaten. Yeah. He'd knocked out a couple of my mates. I've seen him slice up because his kind of game plan, he's got weirdly long arms for how tall he is yeah. and he's just elbows, elbows, elbows. And the fight before we fought, I saw him fight um, this guy, Aaron John, who is the Muay Thai scholar. Okay, on the, uh, the Facebook page. Facebook, YouTube thing. Yeah. And he's 6'2", 6'1", 6'2". Like handy enough, knows a lot about the sport, knows mm. kind of how it works. And they walk out, move around a little bit, a tit southpaw, looks at him, sizes him up, boom, up elbow. The whole middle of his face, just huge cut, stopped straight away. Ugh. Like, poor scholar had no time to even, like, get going. He just got sliced. And I walked in. Scholarship like, revoked. Yeah, and later on, I was, I was like, wow, that's the last part I remember him having. Fuck. Um, <laughs> keep your hands up, I guess. And I was, like, moving around and hit awkward southpaw. And just really good at, like, keeping his range. And I was chasing him, trying to land the punches that I thought. Yeah. I was I don't want to kick him because he'll catch. He's too clever. I don't want to get too close because he'll slice me. He's too yeah. good for that. So I tried to just kickbox him. And, um... I never quite got my range right. He'd go inside low kick coast, inside low kick coast off, and just kind of comfortably like out point. Right, right. Just be just too far away from just the Just out of range. Yeah. yeah. He'd come in, shot, move, and just frustrate me. I got pissed off and he won points. And um, what, what belts does he have? Because I mean, he's, he's a great thing for absolute uh, Thailand to have. He's, he's had like 600 fights. I know he's like, was an MX champ. He's been a yeah, MX champ, champ WMC champ. I was writing Southern up Thailand his profile channel. on the website and I got this information from Thailand. I don't really know any of these Thai trainers. I just yeah. get dot points so I can write up <coughs> profiles for right. him. Right. And I'm like, get um, get his, prof his qualifications. He's like, 600 professional fights. I'm like, 
I've never heard anyone. Yeah, and you were like, this is this can't like, be Come real. on, I'm not putting up just rubbish but on it the is. website. Because <laughs> the thing is, we, we actually dialed that back because it looks unbelievable. It's fairly common, not, not common, it's fairly commonly believed that he's had more than a thousand. But everyone's like, he's trained more than, like, he's no more than I've way. ever trained. So he's also had like 50 Western boxing fights verified on Boxing Rick. Yeah. Like that, he's got 49 fights on his boxing record. Yeah, he won the PABA like, and the IBF belt. Which is more than like Western nearly boxer. any boxing. I don't know many Australian boxers that would have had 50. Yeah, fi- uh, yeah. 50 that's, pro that's, boxing that's Mayweather. Fights. Mayweather's got 50. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, um, yeah. He's like 37. Because I asked him about it. I think yeah. he's like late 30s now. Nah, he's like. Is he older? No, no, he's in his well into well, his 40s. Hey, let's, he, let's, he just lies about it. Every time, every time I ask him, he gives me a different number. I'm like, well, hey, that's he, it. how I old are you? And he's like, oh, the other day. <laughs> how old? He's like, because he gave me this like, an, like long-winded answer. He goes, well, you know, uh, I normally say 41, but really more like 44, but my birth certificate say 43, but my mama and dad say maybe 45. <laughs> and I'm like, so how old? And he's like, yeah, so, so I'm that. And I was like, I walked away going, I'm confused. I'm more confused. Going, like, he's going, yeah. Yeah, he's and then no, I'm so like, 36. I'm 42. Are you older or younger than me? He's like, mm, probably older. And I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah, because he said his first fight he was four. And he, fought, and he fought like four times in that week. I can, in that because, week, but yo, you see him over there because they're, they're too small yeah. to hurt each other, so they just yeah. go again. Yeah. I love them. I love yeah. those little kid but fights. All those, all those count on his record. Yeah. But he would have fought. Was he league. raised in a gym or was he kind of living with his parents and going to the gym? Like, what is it? how does it just work? Just out in rural Thailand. Yeah. Is he East Island or Chimpon. Chimpon. So, like, central. Yeah, yeah. But um, very easy to. Because yeah, they, they have, like, back when he would have been doing it, it would have been most of the fights that he would have had back then would have been, like, market shows. Right. And, like, festivals and stuff. Follow the market around. Yeah. And, and just, yeah. Do a bit of gypsy boxing, Thai like gypsy boxing. Walking around looking at like, I don't know, fucking t-shirts. Yeah. And <laughs> there's some boxing over there. Cool. Yeah. What's your lifestyle like during all these fights, Joe? Are you like pretty, <laughs> you'd be fairly disciplined, I'd imagine, when you're, when you're fighting at this level? Then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue this story. Yeah, um, yeah, back when I was on that mad streak, I was pretty into it. I celebrate after fights and stuff, but... Back in the gym, like the Monday, if you're not injured the Monday after or whatever, you might find a Wednesday night. But yeah. you'd be back, you'd stay off until the weekend, back into it the following Monday, whatever. Right. And then um, fights get fewer and further between because you're fighting on bigger shows. Right. And then it's easier to just kick back and relax a bit. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The actual, <laughs> yeah, the actual tired <laughs> lifestyle of training, it's like, it's very different to here in that you wake up in the morning, you run 10K. Yeah. Do your morning work, which is normally bag work and maybe some light sparring or whatever. 300 sit ups, 300. Um, they love that 300. Knees, knees and bags on that. They love their 300s, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, 300 seats, 300 <laughs> knees, 300 sit ups. That's just to buy them time. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, while they're learning, standing, learning. They're standing at the end of smoking darts. <sighs> just like, it's good for oh, me. 50 more. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> and you go, don't smoke cigarettes next to me while I'm training. There's like, oh, my papa do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But, um, yeah, that would be the morning, afternoon, run three or four K. Yeah. As you warm up, do your five hard rounds on pads and then clinch for an hour. Mm. And then like this is real clinch work too. Yeah. <laughs> and then three hundred tips, three hundred knees, three hundred sit ups, fifty chin ups, and then that's your session for that's a day. the afternoon. And it like never really varied past that. And then yeah. like later on you like when the gyms kind of grew a little bit, you'd start doing actual strength and conditioning right. and adding that in and but then you're it takes away from because their view, I guess, is you're training to be a Muay Thai fighter. Just do Muay Thai. Yeah, they're, they're super against even at Tiger. They're the Thai trainers were really against the Thai fighters doing strength and conditioning. Yeah, because you'd be like, okay, I train in the morning Muay Thai, afternoon I go do strength and conditioning, or the other way around. They go, no, no. You, fight, you fight Muay Thai, train Muay Thai two times a day. Yeah, they're super yeah. against it. So even then, when the Muay Thai guys started tra- transferring over to MMA. It's hard to argue with considering they're so damn good at it. Right, it's, it's almost like they know what they're talking about. Else. But I reckon though it's 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 a lot like if if they would introduce some like of these like Western training modalities and stuff with proper strength and conditioning, all of a sudden you get bull cow and things yeah. like that. These dudes that are fucking freaks, you know? But then you look at the flip side of that and you got a Sancho who doesn't have an ounce of muscle on him and, yeah. and he <laughs> just, just murders yeah. everyone. It's all just craftsmanship in the it's ring. All just, it's all ring. It's all ring. It's all ringsmanship, exactly. Yeah. Do you get dragged into like the clubs and stuff if you're a fighter who's living over there long periods of time? Because I mean, 
I've been to Thailand a few times and it's trained during the day, go to bars at night. Is that the same for people who actually live there? It's, as um, well? That's where all the social scene was at as far as Yeah, as far as like going out. It depends who your what kind of social group is. Like you can go to the Bangla Road and just get loose. You can go to Chelong Reggae Bar and just get loose. <laughs> but it depends who you're kind of hanging about with and what the vibe is. Because it's, it's a mostly a holiday town. Yeah. A holiday island. Creates sorry. a problem for guys that live there. Because yeah. everybody Cause else is there like, on yeah. fucking holiday. Yeah. It would be difficult to be disciplined in that kind of environment. Yeah. If you manage to find a group of guys that are there long term and they yeah. become your group. Like I was real lucky when I was at Calpatak because there was like six of us that lived in the same house, slept on the floor, Thai style, on the little like yeah, foam nice. mattress things, all side by side, pretty much in the gym. You wake up together, train together, yeah. beach, sleep. And you might go for like one or two drinks in the evening at like a normal bar, a quiet one. Yeah. Like you might go to the Naihan Reggae right, right, and right. actually chill out. But then if you even so much as touch a bar like in Laguna. Oh, when every single person in there is on holiday and everyone that works there is trying to get your money. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's too easy. It's, it's an easy, it's an easy pit to fall into. I mean, yeah, I a lot there. of slippery slopes over there, I'd imagine. hundred percent. Yeah, I fell down a few. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's easy. It's, but the problem <laughs> is like, it's, talk about that. It's, <laughs> too, it's, to that. it's too easy, man. Like, I mean, like you said, so what, we'll finish up with it with your, with your, so we, after you fought tit, where did, uh, what happened from there? Um, I carried on. Just um, training, fighting locally, training, fighting locally, and yeah. just kind of keeping the numbers up. Fought some really good guys in that stadium. I like, believe um, you fought someone who's doing pretty good in the UFC these days, Joe. Yeah, that was after I'd left Thailand the second time. Um, yeah, fought a few world champs in the Bangla Stadium for fucking 6,000 baht. So wild, isn't like, it? Yeah, this like guy, the- Christian Boach, who's super heavyweight champ, heavyweight champ, like middleweight champ from before, before he got bigger who lives in Argentina mm. and he's got belts on belts on belts. And if I fought him in Argentina, I'd have got like 10, 15,000 US yeah. for those fights. And I'm fighting him for 6,000 baht. Which is $200? In his little stadium. What did you spend that and, um, on? <laughs> like med- medical bills, yeah. right? <laughs> spend, spend that on that, the three beers that night. You know, but yeah, then after that, ended up pretty kind of tumultuous times because um gym that I was at before Calbertac actually was um, Lion, which is now Absolute yeah. after we took it over. But um, That's down in Hawaii, right? Then it was Lion and they went defunct. I don't know. There was an English guy that was looking after it and he'd sold it, but he never owned it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so this dude was renting. Oh, the, Thailand. So he was renting the gym, sponsored all of us, gave us free accommodation, training, whatever else. And ended up selling the gym to like a bunch of different dudes. And then one day, like, he's like, oh, I've got to go to Bangkok on business. See you in a few days. And we're like, all right, sound, catch you then. Easy. We'll hold, the, hold down the fort. It's not difficult. And then all these guys just start turning up in flash cars. Like, oh, this is my new gym. I said, no, it's my gym. Because I have contract here. It's mine. And then the actual owner turns up. And he's like, nah, the guy who sold you this gym was renting it from me month by month. So then all of us, homeless, we're out. What the fuck? So we were just sort of like, oh shit, what do we do? So we all just jumped ship straight over to the closest small Thai gym we could find that we knew would take us in. Right. And um, this dude, Noah Vilos, he might, I don't know if he's before your time or not, big Noah. Um, yeah, no, I know who you're talking about. He was kind of acting as our manager and looking after us at that point, took us over to this next gym, stayed there for ages, had a bit more success, fought on some more big shows, fought in China a few more times. That, when you were going over to China, that, that was a switch over to K1. Yeah, there's not, they don't do as much. They called it K1, but it was fucking Sander. So you're getting hip tossed. Oh yeah, it's fucking shout out to gonna, Pascal. Yeah, you don't know what rules you're going to get until yeah. you're that, in That's there. a nightmare, bro. With you're fighting over there because of the language barrier and stuff in China. You go fight over there. You don't know what you're getting into. We had a, we had a mutual friend who took a Sander fight over there. He's a K1 Germany champ. Pretty decent Muay Thai guy, I'd yeah. say. Goes um, over and, and gets dumped on his dome, not knowing it's a sand fight, breaks spike. his fucking neck. That's a bad time. Yeah, mm-hmm. bad die. Yeah. Bad but, day, um, bad die. But then, um, <laughs> yeah, from this little tiny gym in Thailand, somehow we got hooked up, fought in fucking Dubai, Uzbekistan, China, fucking everywhere. Yeah. Where'd, you, where'd you fight Israel? Uh, Israel um, and then I had to, I was broke, skint, had to leave, um, had to leave Thailand because I had no money left. And my mate Braden hit me up who's a Kiwi lad, had a little studio. Well, he was opening a little studio and um, needed a trainer. 
And he's like, oh, do you want to come over? I know you're struggling. You can come stay here, be our coach. I was like, all right, sound. So I went back over to, went over to New Zealand. I was coaching out of there. And then got the opportunity to fight on Knees of Fury against a then fairly unknown Israel Adesanya. <laughs> the last style then um, current UFC middleweight champion. <laughs> yeah, it turns out he's pretty good, eh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that guy can fight a little bit. But, um, How'd that fight go? Yeah, like I fucking, it was a middleweight. First time I actually cut weight for a long time. Cut weight, like, wrong. I don't want to make excuses right. or anything. But um, just kind of not at my peak for it, I guess. But fucking, he's good, man. Did you really like? Good? It wasn't the, the result of the fight. He kneed me in the face round two, knocked my teeth out mm. and stoppage. But it wasn't that he hits hard. He just knows exactly where to hit and where you're going to be. Like, he's so fucking switched on. Picks his damn shots. Yeah. He sets like, up real well. How many rounds did you get with him? Just two. Like fairly late in the second, he was setting up this. Is new that video? It'd be around somewhere. I don't want. I find really it. want to find I don't it. Find you're it. really <laughs> not helpful in me. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, he, um, it's been it's been scrubbed from the internet. He was getting his long punches going, long punches, and I'm slipping to the outside, slipping to the outside. Then he goes fake knee. Dong. Sets out perfect. Yeah. Teeth out. Yeah, he's um, trying to find it. They're, they're, yeah, he's trying to pull it up. And, um, they're, they're, like, you know, he talks a lot of shit about how he picks his shots and he sets stuff up so well and stuff. But I mean, I sparred with him one time. You fought him like. The guy truly does set look traps. Look at his attempt, an attempt to spell your name. Joe, Joe Booger. <laughs> Booger. Yeah, he... Um, B-O-O-B-Y-E-R. Yeah, he just knows where you're going. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. It's like he doesn't rush anything because he just waits. And... Um, I don't know if we're going to find this. You. Uh, we are going to find it. Yeah. Fight page now. But um, yeah, he's, he's really... He's real, real good. Where did you, uh, so after that fight, we'll let Dennis try and find it, we'll go back and where, where did, uh, what, what happened after that one? Um, took a little break from fighting for a little while because I was just like, well, I think it was, it's partially like your mind changes a little bit. You picking that up? And, um, be a good mic. All right. Um, so, yeah, we, we got to wrap this thing up, but I want to hear about you going to jail in Thailand, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, after New Zealand, went back to England, coached Thailand, met these guys and came over here and um, went back over to Thailand to look after or to launch the, um, to help launch the Thailand Absolute mm. and had a night out. They got a bit out of control. <laughs> as Thailand saying. will do. As Thailand as will happen. Ended up in Bangkok, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and Where yeah. did you start that night? You're in, you're in. I was at my mate's house in Rawai. Just fairly uneventful, nothing really happening, kicking back, a few drinks. Yeah, yeah. Whatever else. Busted at a checkpoint and didn't have the bribe the cop wanted. Right. Wanted th he wanted 30,000 baht on the spot. Outlandish. Which, Who's carrying that around? Which I just didn't have. Yeah. You can't pull it out anyway. Yeah. Did you try to give him a six pack of beer? No, no, that was different. Okay. <laughs> and that worked too. Maybe you should have. Yeah. <laughs> like I pulled over a checkpoint once. So um, how did you try and negotiate it down from the 30,000? What did you actually say uh, that was unsuccessful? I said, I haven't got 30,000. Who's got 30,000? Mm. And then... Did he say you're a falong and you should have... He to, said... You're all rich? Pretty much expected yeah. me just to have lots yeah. of cash. Yeah. And then he was like, all right, we go ATM, we take out. And I was like, I haven't got it in there either. We argue back and forth a little bit. Too much. <laughs> 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 That's the part I'm trying yeah. to have. <laughs> and I upset the guy. Are you, were you blathered on in Thai with him? Um, I might have called him a dickhead <laughs> in Thai. Yeah. Not the hint of that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm leg, I'm leg. But, um, <laughs> yeah, ended up in the holding cell in Chalong. Yeah, been there. So he um, won the argument. <laughs> oh, yeah, he definitely won. <laughs> <laughs> so it's me and like eight dudes. Like local ties and some Burmese that are all like methed out and they're tweaking. They were yeah. in there for that, and it's one little, it's one there. one tiny little room, like yeah. um, just a little box room, tiled floors. We had eight people in there, this little box, and then ended up thinking me thinking like oh, I spent a couple of days there. They'll get bored, realize that they're not going to get the thirty get the money out of you, yeah, and let me out. And then um, they let me out. And I was back. I think there's a little bit more. Some money got sent over to get you out. I and, um, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just get out. Then, um, You're bowed out by a lady boy. 
Det blir Simon. Nej, nej, nej. Simon. Nej, nej, nej. Simon gave them the money. So this, and, um, this, so he bailed you out of the Chalong. Simon bailed me out of the Chalong one. Okay. Then after after that, thinking everything's all you're straight. Yeah, you're squared. And I can't remember what it was. I had to go and pick my passport up later or something. Right, they hold on to it so you they, can't, they held on to it yeah. so I couldn't run. You wanted to get your Australian then, visa, wasn't it? Like to get yeah, waiting for the visa. That's right. I was getting my visa to come here mm. to get processed through. So I was like, no, I need to get my passport so I can make that. And he's like, now we have to hold it until it's time for you to leave. To go to court. Yeah, they hold it until you whatever go to court. Yeah. And I was like, now I was like, now I need it. <laughs> and then I was like, no, I need to because I'm making an Australian visa. Then I come back and then we go. And he's like, okay. And he gave me my passport. I should have just ghosted you. Is that the full story, Joe? This is the first bit. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me my passport then. <laughs> Didn't you say if you don't give my passport, then, um, I'm going to go to the embassy or something? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they're not allowed to keep it. That's like, yeah. that's international yeah. law. It's yeah. not a Thai thing. Yeah. And um, so I was like, oh, just fucking blah, 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 whatever. And then ended up when I tried to leave eventually after my time was actually done got my Australian passport my Australian visa and everything yeah. went to the airport with a ticket out of Thailand got rearrested at the airport because they were like you can't leave fucking and hell I was like no I've got a ticket now they go nah because you got arrested we have to send you out you can't just leave and I was like well, okay send me out then now like, nah, you have to go from the prison the prison with the people and so I you, got, like, you got done at the airport so I got done at the airport leaving with a valid ticket out and my, your passport all, all in my your bags, hand. Pat, passport in my hand, everything. Fuck off. Oh. The first time you got knocked back at check-in on the first night, then you went back the second night, and yeah. they actually checked you in, took your bags. Yeah, took everything. And you went through and got done at immigration. Got, you went through the, you were bribing someone while they were playing the, cards or went something. Went through the first you? bit. Oh, and then man. got done at like... I always thought the, you got transferred got, straight from Chelong to Bangkok. The and then got taken yeah. back to Chelong. Where, back to Chelong from the airport. Back to Chelong from Phuket Airport. And... Hell, it makes no sense. Then I had to speak to this dude, Kitty, yep. who was just playing cards outside of his house. Like the, like the in, house right outside the, of the yeah, prison right the there? I know exactly general, who you're yeah, talking about. The Chalong general <laughs> of police or whatever. And Simon's on the phone bribing him while he's playing cards next to his little house by the yeah, fucking the police station. little house is right up to the side. Then I got there. taken that night, handcuffed to like three Chinese lads in a minibus. Like a little bus thing, little Toyota Hyatt bus. Yeah. To Bangkok, which is a 14-hour trip. <laughs> in this little minibus, handcuffed to these two Chinese guys, stop to take a piss. And they're like, oh no, you can't piss like on your own. You can't go into cubicles. One of the Chinese guys has to take a shit. So me and this <laughs> other Chinese guy stood outside the cubicle while the old mates like squat toilet in the mud. And we just like got our hands kind of half underneath. He's, so he he's keeping his hands over the air. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just squatting. He's just squatting. Good, squat, for, good, good got, for his bowel form though, yeah. Out there, yeah. <laughs> and, um, Give him a squeeze of encouragement. <laughs> You've got just it, thumb, buddy. Just thumbs up. You can do this. It ended up in Bangkok, the Bangkok IBC. How which, did he um, wipe his ass? Oh, we don't. He used Joe's hands. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's certain we, things to talk about. We, we, stick, we stick together. <laughs> but, um, it ended up in um, the Bangkok IDC, which is... AKA the Bangkok Hilton, right? No, Where's Bangkok the- Hilton's uh, Klong Prem, the big, okay. the big jail, but it's the same shit, the same pictures, yeah. pretty much. Like it was 128 square meters and there was 121 people in the room. Like it was fucking horrible. Like, so, to, so to, walk, walk me through. It was around this point where it started to become less yeah, funny. This, like, is, this, this is whole idea was real. really funny. Walk, walk, so, me through, walk me through walking in to so the, the prison in Bangkok. They go, this is your cell. You stay here. Maybe three day. Maybe one day, two day, three day. Three days, sure, you go, okay? And I was like, all right, sound. Yeah. And they open this door and this stench comes out. It fucking stinks. They're just like sweat and piss and it's yeah. horrible. And um, yeah, looked in at just this sea of people then across the floor, just like shoulder to shoulder, all just in their jocks or like shorts or whatever, yeah. just sweating and it stank. Right in front of me, about a meter and a half away, old French lady boy. <laughs> Still got the fake tits, but no bra, right. sagging down. <laughs> Wearing a diaper because he, she's incontinent. Got right. this like, Einstein-like hair <laughs> kind of flowing out, smoking a dart, just staring like, Ugh. and I'm like, fuck, that's a bit much. <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is my life now. <laughs> so then I look down to the other side across just to see a bodies on the floor. Yeah. And there's this old man just sweating, hair, like real hairy troll looking man, big long arms and big hands, just looked like he had like a bodysuit on, but it was just how hairy you were. Yeah. Just like matte sweat in yeah. his jocks. And I'm like, oh, 
I put my next to him. <laughs> and then I looked down to the left, there's a little like um hallway, like a meter wide, four meters long, where um would lead to the toilets. Yeah. And there's this poor dude, this French guy, naked, top to tail, handcuffed up, like with his hands behind his head, with the handcuffs to the railings. Like classic medieval torture yeah. style. And he's, yeah. and he's just hanging there by his shoulders. Like a dungeon. And squatting out, he's pretty tall, so he could almost reach the floor. So he's right. kind of, kind of like kind of squatting, there. but yeah, kind of squatting. And then I realised that there was this shit all like down Drake underneath him, down his leg. Next to him, oh and I was God. like, oh, and it's these Iranian guys that run the cell, like kind of take care of the place. Yeah, I just fucking screaming at him, like I don't know what he did wrong or what was going on, but um, yeah, just full screaming, shouting, screaming, shouting, screaming, and I was like. What is going on here? Look down yeah. in front, and there was just this little kind of patch of white lads, and one of them looks at me and goes, "Welcome, mate." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> and he's like, "You from England?" And I was like, "Yeah." And um, real sad. Now I got my Facebook now. <laughs> oh, oh, Michael. Yeah, good bloke. Is, but, um, is Michael he, out, Michael's out now too. Yeah, he's this, this is a jailhouse romance. This is <laughs> <laughs> deeply going on. But, um, yeah, it was like. Few English lads sitting down there, so that's where we kind of set up camp. Was it, was it pretty and sectioned out, like by nationality? It was like Koreans over there, Chinese over there, Russians over and there. So there weren't Thais or, or in our place. There was a bunch of Cambodians and Burmese. Oh, so it, they, had, they put the Burmese, but, in there but too. not loads. Okay, I think just like overflow maybe. Right. But ours was like the international one, so it was all, all the Europeans were in there. Right. But like, was the Thai scale cells much sketchier? For sure. Yeah. Like ours was filthy and kind of weird, but yeah. never scary. It was yeah, just yeah. like gross. So like it was never like um, never like it would really make you. Feel, it was never a time where you'd, where you'd be scared. Right, you, did, you didn't feel like you were gonna get. Nah. you were gonna get stabbed ever. Yeah, you never feel like you're gonna get done. You just feel like, how long have I got to deal with this? Right. So I sat down with the old mate next to me, and I was like, they said three days. How long have you been here? And he was like, oh, about four weeks. They told me six days as well. Oh, and they're like, well, that's this is me then. Well, and the crazy thing but you then, were telling me about when, we were, when you said that the because the embassy's supposed to come a certain amount of times, right? Yeah, they're supposed to come every. Tuesday, Thursday. So it's going twice a week. Yeah. And he was like, he said, he saw them on the first day that he was in there or the second day that he was in there and hasn't seen them since. He's been there for a month. <laughs> so I'm like, shit. There was a Russian guy that I was talking to that has been there for six months and hasn't seen the embassy yet. Jesus. Like, so. It doesn't pay to go to jail in Thailand, does it? It's just fine. You've got no communication. They take your phone off. They take everything away. And there's a phone downstairs, like a coin phone you can use. Yeah. But I didn't, we, I went outside for an hour over like two weeks. Did you do an hour? So the rest of the time you're, the in, the time that, you're in that, that cell, shit scattered yeah. cell with the with uh, with fucking Einstein, the lady boy, and yeah, good god. So like, you get fed morning and night, one meal, like two meals, like one each time, and right. it's just um, boiled rice and cucumber. You might. might you might get a bit of egg in there if you're lucky. You get the yeah. right scoop from this big slop bowl. Right. So like, lost a heap of weight, and just malnourished and fucked. There's a Chinese guy in there that had been there for fucking 12 years. Oh. He killed someone in China and was like, it's better to be here than to get extradited and executed. Yeah. So yeah. he stayed, just went mad. <laughs> like shower time, everyone else just like pours a bucket of water on their head. But he's there like scratching his skin off, gone full mad. He just, so he's completely lost. Yeah, just flipped it. And he's just like their pet. They just kind of keep him. Everybody they, feed, they feed him every day. Jesus. And he, yeah, he's fucking gone. And yeah, there for two weeks, all up. Would have been a lot longer if it wasn't for the efforts of Simon and... <laughs> Everyone here, to be honest, like, Jess. just fucking phenomenal. Simon and Jess, and just their communication together, and then with the embassy, and making sure that. Man, what a fucking trip! Did you got to write a book? And following that, how long were you in for? Two weeks, thereabouts. And then came into a Chris Bradford fright, basically. Yeah, no, that's, can that's we, right, we, got to, yeah. we got time to run through that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, was almost right. immediately after that being in. I that. went to England for a couple of days because you have to get sent to where. You, What's on your passport? What airline did they fly you out of Bangkok on? Uh, <laughs> Ukraine Air. <laughs> Didn't know Ukraine even had planes. Yeah. <laughs> they just normally shoot them out of their sky. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flying over that airspace. Time yeah. Malaysian Airlines. Yeah, yeah. 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 flew back, back, um, back to the Ukraine to the UK on Ukraine Air, which is like a 14, 15 hour trip with one of those little fold down tiny, tiny TVs that has one channel on that I can't understand. Right. And I'm like, oh, that's like being back in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing the, the last little jab they, they can get you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, back in England, saw the family for a couple of days, obviously caught did, up. Did, it, did they the were family fucking, know you were in jail? They found out at some point. Yeah. The embassy probably contacted them. Um, okay, your son's in Thai prison. Um, Just thought you should know. Yeah, <laughs> Not funny there. prison either. That yeah. was real serious. I had a quick catch up and ended up coming back over here after that. Like, so probably like a week after that whole ordeal. That was my welcome back fucking date night with yeah. Jess. That I got a phone call saying, we've had a pull out. Do you want to fight on Saturday? <laughs> this is on like Thursday night. Right. And I was like five or six beers deep, just loving the fact that I can eat and drink again. <laughs> you can so have a beer. Yeah, just having like- a great time. <laughs> and um, I kind of thought about it and I was like, well, I now owe a lot of people a lot of money. Right. For all the bail and whatnot. I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll jump in. Yeah. And just had a five round war. Like jumped in, just fucking gypsy Joe. Yeah. Had a punch <laughs> on. <laughs> like, we had a fight to fight. Let's fucking <laughs> just jump in and have a scrap. And did enough to kind of slow him down. But he's a big boy. Put me down three times with body shots. Yeah. The body, the body still hadn't recovered from Thai prison. Oh, definitely not. Got, your guts got and scrambled in there by yeah, old, did, um, uh, Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then. Look, fair lost on points, but yeah. did enough that everyone was talking about. The commentators were saying it's the best fight they've commentated. They can't believe it. Fucking this and that and the other. And yeah, that was my welcome back to Australia. Fucking cool. Damn, bro. What a mission. Yeah, well, I, 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 can, I can say this. It has been great for me having Joe not be in prison. <laughs> I get somebody to beat the shit out of me and make yeah. all the work and everything. I know all, all the, like everybody that trains with you here, it's fucking, we're glad you're not in jail. That's for damn sure. Should we wrap this shit up since uh, we're getting ran off by the yeah, guy? Yeah, the um, couple of things also. We've got our Christmas party coming up on the 21st of December. So all Absolute members are invited to that. Said our this is a chance to get on the podcast. If you get and we that. are going to be doing a <laughs> yeah. podcast during the Christmas party. We're not, I don't think we're brave enough to do it live. We're going to get into a lot of trouble if we were to Let's do it. Let's do it live. Fuck it. We'll see. Fuck it. Fuck it. Live. We'll probably make you a sober decision. That'd be not absolutely to do it. unnecessary. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, and a couple of gradings coming up December 14th. We've got our coloured belt grading. And then on the 21st, before the Christmas party, there's brown and black grading. Okay. Well, That's we guys pretty much it. And the, then, uh, guys, uh, we've got five guys. Five guys? Four guys? Four now. We've we got like Lucas lost here on Hex this weekend. Four guys on Hex this weekend at the. Melbourne, Melbourne Pavilion. Melbourne yeah. Pavilion. Kevin, Jack, Raja, and Sammy Hibbard. Sammy Hibbard. And then yours truly is ringing in the new year, Saitama Super Arena. Guys, make sure you turn into that one because it's going to be fucking fireworks. Guys, once again, this has been episode four. Yeah. yeah. It's been absolutely unnecessary. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Thanks for having me. Boom. Shut up, Dan! <laughs> <laughs>